so nice to see all of you. So I'll start it off. Good evening or good morning to everyone. Before I go on to opening this event, I very quickly would like to call out a few house rules. Please uh, mute yourselves when you're not speaking. Should you want to share something, kindly raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon. While the sessions are on, please leave your questions in the Q&A section. And through the event, we will keep changing each of your status from an attendee to a participant. And this transition might take a few seconds, so please be patient. If any panelist drops out of their session, please join us back and allow us a minute to add you to the group again. As attendees, you will not have control to the mute and the video tabs. You can, however, use the chat option to write to Ronisha if you need any help. You will find her name in the drop-down list in the chat section. Or you could raise your hand and our team will get back to you. For the last session, which is the talent show, please keep your videos on to make this an engaging and enjoyable session. And last but not the least, to archive this event, we would like to record the proceedings. We hope to have your consent on this. Kindly leave a message with Ronisha if you have any concerns related to the recording. So on behalf of Grameen Foundation India, I extend a warm welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today in celebrating GFI's 10th anniversary. At the very outset, I would like to say that each one of you who are present in this event today remain an integral part of this organization in its journey through the past, in the present, and of the future. Each of your invaluable contributions have built this organization and defined its mission and will continue to do so. So today's event is a celebration of this very journey and we aim to do it through retrospection, reconnection, sharing of moments that bring a smile to our faces, taking a moment, to acknowledge each of our contributions and consolidation of this incredible and existing solidarity with utmost humility and gratitude. Thank you once again for being a part. May I now request Prabhat Lab, the CEO of Brahmin Foundation India to open the event with his welcome and keynote address. Thank you. Thank you, Purna. Uh... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are really, really uh, appreciative uh, uh, of the fact that you all have uh, taken time from your busy schedules to join us for this very, very special moment uh, to be with us. Uh, today marks a significant milestone in the journey of uh, Grameen Foundation India as an organization. Uh, we complete the first decade of our journey uh, and step into the, into the second decade. One may ask, you know, what's so special about, you know, turning 10? Isn't it like any other day, you know, yesterday you were 10, you know, tomorrow you'll turn 11 or you know, 12 or 15. But actually, it's an important turning point for any organization or even for any individual as you uh, kind of, you know, uh, turn 10 and, you know, uh, uh, enter into your next decade. When you're a decade old, uh, the expectations from you increases. Uh, you're expected to develop or transform from a group of individuals into a team. You would have developed a certain organizational culture. Uh, you would have figured out how your vision and mission would translate into certain actions and outcomes. You would have established relationships with a set of stakeholders who believe in you, who are willing to partner with you towards uh, your common goals. In this backdrop, uh, let me also talk about uh, you know, a report that just came out two days ago uh, from the Reserve Bank of India that talked about very severe uh, distress in the Indian economy uh, and it says that for the first time ever there's going to be massive contraction in Indian GDP in the last seven decades. Moreover, it goes on to say that it's not just contraction in overall GDP but also the fact that it's the poorest of poor uh, and people working in the informal sector who are going to be most severely affected because the white-collar workers can, can you know quickly transform into work from home scenario and continue to earn their salary or, or uh, continue to perform their work. Whereas for, for blue collared workers, they cannot go to work, they cannot earn their livelihoods. And they are the ones who are in real, real distress at this point of time. So that kind of, you know, uh, it's in that backdrop that we 
uh, today complete our 10 years. And it kind of just reminds us about uh, the even more significance and relevance of our role as an organization, of our, of, of our mission of enabling the poor, especially women, to, to overcome poverty and hunger in, in, in this world. This is a timely reminder of, you know, uh, of, uh, for not just Grameen Foundation India, but for all social development organizations about uh, the critical role that uh, they have to play in a post-COVID world. And we are actually you know, quite fortunate that uh, you know, we as an organization have developed uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, tools and technologies and methods which are and which will continue to be extremely relevant in this uh, future. As we turn 10, today we are more confident as an organization. We are willing to take more risks and we are confident to push boundaries. We are confident to ask questions. And we are also confident to kind of, uh, you know, take, take risks and, and make mistakes if, if uh, it, it, it leads to that. So we are also fortunate uh, and extremely honored to have uh, an opportunity to celebrate this occasion with all of you today, uh, with uh, people who were responsible and who took the brave and, and visionary decision to set up Grameen Foundation India. We are truly honored and fortunate to have Alex Counts with us, uh, the, the founder CEO of Grameen Foundation. We also have Chandni today with us, uh, the, the founder CEO of Grameen Foundation India, who also led uh, the organization for the first seven years of its journey. We are also fortunate to have uh, Steve, who is the current CEO and president of, of Grameen Foundation. And of course, a lot of other uh, you know, uh, uh, current and former staff, board members, uh, uh, who, have, who are with us today. So we really uh, are, are fortunate uh, to, to, to have you join us for this, this journey. Uh, it is uh, through your unstinted support and, and encouragement uh, and, and, and good wishes that, that we stand where we stand today. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, fortunate that, that you are able to join us today for the celebration. Um, uh, we'll show a short video uh, that that uh, our teams have compiled, which shows, you know, in, in like four five minutes, a very short, uh, you know, some glimpses and some messages from some from some key people. So I'll turn it over to uh, uh, Purna for showing us. are we? What, who are we? What inspires us? Inspiration brings us infinite joy. Joy of being given this opportunity to help the communities and to learn from them. The joy that our girls feel when they learn new things at school and feel confident of taking on any challenges that come their way. We believe that when technology meets empathy, great things can be achieved. Grameen builds on the pioneering work in developing the microcredit model that demonstrated how convenient access to small collateral free loans can help change the lives of the poor and lift them out of poverty. At Grameen, we have already impacted 1.3 million people by working with low-income communities, especially women, by empowering them with skills, knowledge and information on health and nutrition. By leveraging digital platforms to connect low-income people to infinite opportunities, by working with microfinance institutions, banks, agribusinesses and social impact organizations to help people build assets, deal with crisis and manage risk. We build trust and confidence amongst the invisible people that they have an identity, that they are welcome to participate and that they have a voice and a choice. With a commitment to diversity, inclusion and gender equality, we celebrate the innovativeness and entrepreneurial spirit of diverse Graminis who over the past decade 
have worked on complex technology solutions and analyzed deep data so that women in rural areas can have simple solutions to manage their lives. We celebrate the Gramin Mitras who with their patience, grit and ambition wow us every single day. Come join us as we celebrate our family, our partners, beneficiaries and the Gramini in all of us. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary. Congratulations, Prabhat, and the entire team. I feel so proud that I was associated with Grameen Foundation for two years in their journey of changing people's lives, especially women, making them financially inclusive so that they can take charge of their own lives. I still remember the initial days when we were looking at starting Grameen Foundation in India along with Chandni and Jennifer. Uh, and it's been such an incredible journey. I remember the microfinance crisis and then the boom and then again the past during the uh, COVID crisis. I mean, each area, each era has been uh, and yet you guys have hung in there and just continue to focus on the customer, continue to focus on real impact. From the groundbreaking early work that GFI did in understanding women's account usage and how to better scale their digital access to financial services, to the jobs conference and the work they're doing now, to reach rural communities. I've always been proud to be a part of Grameen Foundation India. The team of Grameen Foundation are very dedicated, committed and caring. They understand the problems of the poor very well and are committed to cause of poverty elevation. I was uh, deeply impressed by the commitment of Grameen Foundation to promote uh, fair practices, customer protection and especially the HR practices within uh, microfinance institutions. It is amazing to see that one organization managed to attract so many wonderful and passionate people. It was a very uh, nice uh, learning experience for me working with Grameen Foundation India. I enjoyed the one year that I worked uh, with people there. Uh, not just, you know, learning about microfinance and uh, uh, the situation in India, but also about, you know, healthy salads and um, other kinds of chutneys and pickles. <laughs> I wish them well in the next decade. I can't wait to see, see the exciting programming they have in store. Keep it up and all the best. Who are we? Well, thank you, Prabhat, for laying the context for this uh, this event. I would now request Gaurav Chakravarti, who is the COO of Grameen Foundation India, to take on the next session, which is titled, Looking Back, How Did We Get Here? Right, thank you so much, Poonan. Fabulous video. You know, we got the history flashing by. Excellent. So I hope uh, my audio is uh, good and, uh, you know, uh, Thank you uh, very much, uh, you know, for for the session. Uh, in this session, what we are looking, you know, to retrace our journey by looking back and uh, you know see how we got here. And it is my absolute honor and pleasure to welcome our panelists, uh, Alex Counts, Chani Ori, and uh, Steve Hollywood with us. I do have a tough time, you know, of uh, managing the time here. So uh, the format is something you know, on which I have been wondering of how to go about because we have fabulous speakers and uh, given the time, you know, they can go on and we would want to hear as much as, you know, from them. So what uh, we would do is, you know, uh, we would try to retrace our journey. So starting with Alex, then moving on to Chani and finally, you know, our present uh, days with Steve. Uh, I'll, you know, I will pass on some leading questions and then maybe, uh, our panelists, Alex, Chani, and Steve, you will have around you know five minutes to speak about it. And uh, the key here would be to you know uh, look back into the history, give us the perspective, the journey, and also you know uh, give us uh, the word, the thought for the future. So starting with Alex, you know Alex, uh, as we all know, he is uh, the founder of uh, Grameen, and uh, he founded Grameen you know with the support of. Uh, uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus and was the president and CEO of uh, Grameen in 1997. Uh, 
he is independent consultant and uh, working with different uh, non-profit organizations presently and also a professor of school of public policy and also at the university of maryland uh, college park uh, alex is a you know a fabulous writer and orator and uh, you know my personal favorite book has been which i still you know keep uh, reading most often has been you know uh, about changing the world without using your mind and uh, apart from that you know <laughs> apart from that uh, you know uh, another you know very strong book has been uh, when in doubt ask more because these are things which we as uh, you know people in the field we would uh, require such kind of you know experience being shared us, uh, with us so uh, handing over to alex uh, you know you would have 5 minutes and take it away sure thank you uh um, Gaurav, Prabhat, uh, you know, I'm really grateful that you all are including me in this uh, session. I'm glad that you're marking this milestone. And I really love uh, what, um, what Prabhat and, uh, is doing to lead GFI forward uh, under Steve's uh, leadership at the global level. Um, in terms of uh, GFI in the context of Grameen Foundation's history, you know, when I started Grameen Foundation, well, we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, we were just trying to survive one quarter of the next but we i had this thought which turned out to be completely wrong that our future was going to be mainly in latin america um, and while we have done some important work there uh, it was slow to get started but the quality of the social entrepreneurs uh, in india some of whom had met me when i was living in bangladesh and the the, the, the partnership ideas they brought to us were so bold uh, and then when they got going, they, were, they performed so well that India became a very important place for us, uh, not just in terms of the sheer numbers of impacted, uh, which India, uh, due to its size, has, but just the quality of the ideas and the quality of the values and how much they uh, were resonant with ours. Um, and our work in China struggled, uh, the other big market in Asia. So we really focused, doubled down on India. When the Grameen Technology Center came online, uh, in 2001 or so, uh, the MIFOS, Village Computing Project, MoTeC, all of them uh, naturally gravitated towards India. So it, was, it, was, it made a lot of sense for us to set up an office there uh, to complement uh, Grameen Capital India. Uh, and I, just one word about Chandni, you know, we installed Chandni as the chief operating officer. We thought that she would uh, have an gr amazing ability to just run the internal operations we did not see her as a CEO material, uh, uh, and, uh, and we were totally wrong. Uh, we installed her as an interim, and we couldn't find anyone who we, uh, and we finally said, okay, Chandni, we'll give you a chance. And boy, did she come through as a leader um, more than we ever thought, more, perhaps more than she ever thought. And when I think about her, and I think about uh, also Sabrina Qureshi, I think about whether it was, I don't know if it was Grameen Foundation under my leadership, uh, uh, but we, you know, we sometimes fail to see the latent leadership capabilities of women in South Asia, uh, and they just surprised the heck out of us, and I'm so glad they did, uh, and more to come, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I was asked about why we set up Grameen Foundation as a, India as a social business. In short, there were pros and cons of different options, but, um, you know, we really want to be reinforce Muhammad Yunus's um, idea of social business, which was his response to some of the contradictions uh, and some of the problems in the social enterprise impact investing uh, uh, space uh, and uh, set up something with more rigor in it. So we were always given a lot of latitude with Grameen Foundation, but uh, in that way we chose to, uh, to reinforce his, his ideas. Uh, and I'm, I think we're you know, glad that we did. Uh, Gora, thank you. You did mention my two books, uh, two recent books that came out of my experience, largely leading Grameen Foundation and being, and I wrote a lot about our work in India. Um, and just a couple of lessons from those. I did a session with the GFI staff a few months ago, which was a lot of fun. But, um, you know, I, in the new book, When in Doubt, Ask for More, is kind of a simplified telling of those lessons uh, without all the stories uh, embedded. But, you know, I, I really believe that you should see fundraising not as a transaction, but as a partnership. And, and that leads into the title of the book, uh, When in Doubt, Ask for More. Because when you're, when you're looking at a uh, partnership, uh, you'd always want it to be the biggest partnership it could be. So in fundraising, ask for as much as you want and need, and uh, it's up to the other person whether they want to take the partnership that far or that fast. Um, 
I, I'm a big fan of investing in your, your volunteers and your governing body way more than a lot of uh, leaders do. Uh, and if you invest in them, it'll, it'll pay back, I think, in almost every case. Uh, I've become a big fan, especially later in my career, of praising people. Uh, praise does not make people complacent for the most part. It makes them uh, motivated to do more and, uh, and take care of yourself. Uh, the, 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 the idea of the self-sacrificing social entrepreneur who runs themselves from the ground and that that's, uh, I, that, I just feel that's a really antiquated idea. Um, and then I'll just lastly say uh, this idea of Grameen 2.0, 3.0, whatever. You know, I, when I showed up in Bangladesh in 89, already Grameen Bank was developing new things to go on top of micro credit and microfinance. And so I think Grameen 2.0 probably goes back as far as the late 80s. And I think Grameen kind of led by Bangladesh uh, is probably on something like Grameen 7.0 at this point, new ideas that have been reinvented. Of course, there was the reinvention of the Grameen microcredit model in the uh, early 2000s called Grameen 2.0 or the Grameen Generalized System. But when I see Grameen Foundation, um, I see the early years where we were just flailing around as kind of Grameen 1.0, uh, um, the, the 2004 to 2008, it really placed a big bet on microfinance scaling and technology was 2.0. And this last era of 2010 to 2020, the era of Grameen Foundation in India's first decade is 3.0. And then now I think I, I, the way I look at it, I mean, it's all numbers and, and uh, terminology. I think it's a 4.0. And for those of you crafting that, uh, Prabhat, Steve, other leaders. Um, I just say, you know, stay true to green values and ideas and ideals. Um, and remember that you're part of a global network. Um, don't be afraid to work with others, even competitors, uh, even non-traditional uh, partners, but also don't be afraid to stand alone. Uh, if uh, if you're, our Grameen ideals uh, and values call us to uh, go against the conventional wisdom, uh, have the courage to do that and maybe the world will catch up with you. And I'll just stop there and again, I'm so honored to be part of this today. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. Uh, unfortunately, we we have our time check. Uh, uh, but yes, you know, hearing you and listening to you, we can go on and on. So thank you so much, you know, for inspiring us. And, uh, you know, do keep uh, publishing books. We, you know, eagerly await for those. And uh, looking forward to your thought leadership as well. So moving on uh, to Chani and, uh, you know, I personally have had the opportunity of working under her guidance and have, uh, you know, always marveled at her grit and determination. At the same time, her ease and, you know, you know, the elegance, uh, you know, the she, you know, radiates. So uh, introducing Chani is like, uh, she, you know, she has been a pillar of support for each one of us, be it, you know, the ex Graminis as well as the present times we, you know, we have always learned uh, so much from her. And uh, she has been the founder, uh, CEO of uh, GFI in India and uh, started in 2011 till uh, 2017. She is a champion in financial inclusion and the financial health space. Serving, you know, she has served in the boards of uh, different MFIs, uh, Cash4 as well as uh, Sonata. And currently she is uh, based out of uh, US, uh, working at Financial Health Network, uh, a non-profit organization working for financial uh, health in the U.S. and beyond. So, uh, Chani, it's a pleasure introducing you. We are very inquisitive to hear from you regarding, you know, the, the starting days. How did it all happen? Your first office, first staff, first project, you know, how did it all begin? And finally, you know, how do you see us uh, moving forward into the next decade? Yeah, thank you so much, Gaurav, uh, and everyone for including me in this wonderful milestone. Uh, you know, I'm so proud, uh, so, so proud uh, that uh, uh, what I invested a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears in has yielded, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so much uh, good uh, impact and, and results here. And thank you again also, Raj, for taking forward you know what I handed over to you which was partly made uh, partly a mess I think uh, and you I think really taken it uh, to the next level and you know, like Alex said it's the next version um, and I look forward to really seeing Grameen uh, 
uh, GFI ends up, you know, in another 10 years. Um, so to Gaurav's question, you know, about how we started, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, we, the work in, our, in India was continuing to grow. We had joined Grameen Foundation, um, the global office uh, in 2003. And uh, very soon I was assigned to India program. That's where my heart lay um, as well. And, um, you know, between 2005, 2010, I was leading much of our work in India and it was growing very rapidly. And we felt that trying to manage that from a distance was, um, you know, was not very effective, uh, but also in some ways a disservice to the people that we were trying to serve because we really had to be closer to them to understand what their needs were um, and then be able to develop our program accordingly. So even though we had been working in India and had consultants on the ground, um, you know, uh, for almost a decade, uh, when we set up the office in 2010, uh, you know, that's when the next chapter in India really, really started. And we really wanted to be seen as, um, as a global company uh, with bringing international practices, but also really with a very strong local flavor. So people did see us as an international organization that is coming and telling, you know, people um, in India what to do and how to do it. Um, and so, for the first you know, couple of years, especially, that was a big focus. Um, so, putting our reputation and our brand to can we, uh, you know, act, think global but act local uh, uh, as an organization. Uh, the fact that uh, we had the Grameen uh, methodology and the brand and the relationships to leverage was obviously a, a big support. But uh, the early years were definitely. Um, you know, it, it was like we were an entrepreneurial company, a company within a company um, in many ways. And so when we decided to set up Grameen Foundation India, so many people, internal champions, um, you know, like Jennifer Mullen, um, uh, who was our founding board member, um, and also part of the, part of the company uh, owner in some sense, <laughs> the way we set it up. Uh, she was such, uh, such a great champion for us. Uh, Vinita, who I understand um, is probably on this call, uh, you know, help figure out how we create this uh, social business, which was a new idea, and then fit that the legal structure, you know, um, of India. Uh, Royston, who we heard in the video, I think, who's also on the here, uh, uh, you know, who was always the silent champion behind us, cheering us on. Uh, there's so many people that, you know, I, I'll run out of names, i run out of time to say all of those names that uh, help set it up. Um, when we decided to set up the office in India, I think we zeroed in on Delhi, Gurgaon um, as the area that we wanted to focus on very, very early because it seemed like um, a lot of the activity needed to happen, you know, um, a, in the city where would have funders uh, as well as network organizations very accessible to us because um, again as Alice said we have always focused a lot on partnerships um, and really um, increasing and leveraging the impact of our work through working with other organizations uh, and I do remember that within Delhi and Gaon, you know, these are big areas. Uh, we asked about looking for offices and, you know, how, how did we zero in? <laughs> um, it, it was a tough, uh, tough journey. Uh, uh, you know, I was, uh, incidentally, I was about five months pregnant when I moved to India. And so I was uh, running all around Delhi and Gurgaon, look for offices. Uh, and, uh, you know, paying attention to all the things like, you know, sunlight does it get to what is the state of the tower toys. <laughs> so very different from all the programmatic work that I've been focused on. Um, but I think we ended up in a, in, in a good place. Um, I, our current offices, are, I think, are uh, continue to be in Gurgaon, in um, Nirvana Courtyard. And uh, that ended up being uh, a choice for so many different reasons, but mainly because it was uh, about the time that we were able to attract. It ended up being a nice place to settle and live. And so we, it allowed us to attract a lot of, uh, lot of people and talent who wanted to be associated with us with an organization, but could see that this would also be um, you know, good for their personal, personal lives um, as well. Um, 
think uh, you, uh, you know one of the things I want to share is that uh, in all of my career of you know now close years, the period I spent as the CEO of it was a period of thrown into the deep end a little a little bit, uh, but. Uh, uh, you know, it really forced me to um, expand my skills, my empathy, my uh, ability to relate to people, uh, my ability to handle stress. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, it's, I still look back on it as a period of immense, immense personal growth. And I'm so, so thankful to everyone who made that possible, uh, from the senior leaders at Grameen Foundation to our board members at GFI, to all the staff, you know, uh, you pull me in so many different directions, <laughs> uh, but I'm thankful for that because uh, it really allowed me to, uh, you know, expand and grow as a person. Um, I think uh, the last thing I want to say is that um, I really did focus on trying to build a culture at GFI. We really wanted to make sure we were adhering to our global values and certainly the values that Dr. Yunus had. Uh, you know, try to um, inculcate in all of us. And, you know, we have the seven principles of a social business uh, listed uh, on in, in our office. Um, and the last one we took very seriously, you know, it was all about having fun. Um, so um, we did make sure that as an organization, people worked hard, but they also, you know, partied hard and they had a lot of fun. Um, and um, food was a very central uh, organizing uh, principle for us, you know, we were always centered around what food we are going to have, where and when. <laughs> and I hope that continues in the culture of GFI um, as well. So I'm just very, very, um, uh, you know, proud that the organization has gone through a lot of, uh, you know, um, trials, but has turned, come out so resilient, um, so impactful. Um, and I just, like I said, cannot wait to see what the next 10 years holds for the organization. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chani, so much. And, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure listening to you. And food does, uh, you know, remain part, very strongly part of the culture because it is the center point of most of our discussions. Moving very quickly to Steve. Uh, Steve, uh, you know, bring the perspective of uh, you know, today's times. Uh, you know, Steve, just to introduce you shortly, uh, Steve is a president and CEO for Grameen Foundation, uh, really a champion, you know, in terms of international development over 30 years of experience working in poverty alleviation. He has, you know, spent quite a bit of time in India working in care and freedom from hunger. So he has a bit of India already in him. So uh, Steve, you know, uh, from your perspective, you know, uh, with the present times of uh, the post-COVID world, how do you see us uh, evolving? How social impact organizations like us uh, remain, you know, uh, keep their focus uh, to the new challenges? And how do we, you know, uh, see ourselves in this new normal? Thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me pretty well. Um, you know, first off, I'd like to congratulate uh, and recognize you know, all of the past and current uh, folks from Grameen Foundation India who are on the call, thank you all so much for, you know, all your dedication and hard work. Uh, you know, it really is right that we are, and correct that we're celebrating, you know, 10 very, very good years. So thank you. I'd also like to, you know, give a deep thanks to both Alex and Chandni. Uh, you know, uh, all of us in the leadership team, all of us in India, you know, know what a, a legacy that we're carrying forward. And it's a big thanks to both of you, frankly, for all the work that you did, all the, all the, the vision that you brought to the organization. So thank you very much. As Gaurav mentioned, I, I am a South Asian person. I lived 13 years in South Asia, five years in India. So I really love the subcontinent and I love the dynamism, uh, you know, that it offers for us to work in. And you know, I can reveal that, uh, you know, some years ago, I knew Prabhat as a very young professional. Uh, and I think everybody at that time knew that he was destined for much greater things. And, you know, it's really just a great fulfillment for me to see, you know, Prabhat doing such a great job in India. And 
and, and bringing together such a good team. So uh, thank you for all you're doing. Um, you know, it, this is a critical time. Uh, India, probably of all the developing world, is the best structured for looking forward for a digitized economy. Uh, you know, it has a fantastic uh, strategy for doing that. Of course, the foundation of it is really how that, uh, how that Aadhaar system and how the payment system reaches the poor. I'll say a little bit more about that in the future. But I think the important thing to point out about what Grameen Foundation India is doing is it's working to see and to demonstrate how that overriding strategy and system for the whole of India is going to have is having social impacts to the poorest, right? And that's really the critical takeaway, you know. I believe that uh, that we need to focus on, and and Green Foundation India is 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 shepherding so so well. So there's a big social pay social impact paid off from what's happening with the digitization of India's economy. COVID, of course, you know, was highlighted. Provide you mentioned it. It's really creating globally three crises. It's creating a health crisis. It's creating an economic crisis, crisis, and it's creating a, a crisis uh, of of uh, of food food insecurity for the poorest in the world. And you know we're seeing the numbers rise uh, in all of those categories, and that that is a great concern to all of us, and to you know, and to and to our work at Grameen Foundation. You know, I, I think the 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 important thing to pay attention to is that link of the digitized economy to the poorest and what what service can it lend to helping the poorest among us cope with what's going on with COVID. And again, Grameen Foundation India really is showing the way through the Mitra system uh, in particular and how, how much in demand those services are, how, how, how swiftly the number of transactions through the Mitras during this, this crisis period have increased. It's really an indication of how critical you know, the, the digitized economy is for the poor and is going to be for the poor uh, in coping with this, 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 these crises, but then emerging from them. So, you know, uh, the, I think India is also showing the way in terms of collaboration. You know, there was a day when our focus was primarily MFIs, but it's broadening. Uh, of course, you know, the Mitras and, and uh, you know, the, the, the whole India stack as a whole range of partners. Uh, you know, business correspondence, uh, producer groups, you know, these are all going to be critical collaborative partnerships with us. And, you know, when whether we talk about Grameen 2.0 or Grameen 8.0, you know, it really is about how we can leverage, you know, the, the, the use of data, you know, the, the digitization of information, you know, really to understand uh, the people we work with better, to provide them with the right kinds of information, that they need to make better decisions on their own uh, and to include them in, in the developments that are happening, uh, you know, with the digitization of, of the economy. And, and, you know, the innovations that, that you've all done in India, you know, on Green Guru, on G Leap, you know, artificial intelligence, using augmented reality, you know, to understand and to, and to impact behavior and practices, uh, you know, more systematically, more uh, agilely, uh, you know, are really, really critical. You know, it, the final word I'd have to say is I, I do know India and I love India uh, and I, I, rel I enjoy very much, you know, all of my experiences there. But I know globally India is a special case. It's different than other countries, right? And it's different in very, very, very good ways. It's got an, an enormous potential. It's got incredible human resources. It's got, a, you know, a tremendous economy that really can be directed, you know, towards solving problems in India. So India will find a way to learn and to grow and develop on its own. Uh, you know, you're going to forge your own approach. You know, we're proud that it can be linked to what we're doing, but we know that it's going to take directions that need to be taken because of the situation on the ground. And uh, we also know that India is going to be and is a major contributor, you know, to our work globally. It's a leader for us and its impact, its influence, you know, for us globally on what we do in other countries, uh, you know, is profound already, but will only grow. So I want to congratulate you all. I want to wish you well. Uh, and thank you very much for 10 amazing years. We're looking forward to 10, to at least 10 more. So successfully moving forward. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Steve. Uh,
I would, uh, you know, I'm getting uh, quite a few messages from the, you know, from the panel. So I would need to, you know, uh, wind up very quickly. So with a very quick uh, word of thanks, thank, uh, thank you so much, Alex, Chani, Steve. You know, it's early morning there, but uh, thank you for being here and uh, being part of the panel and part of the celebrations. Moving very quickly to to the next session, I would uh, like to hand it over to Madhurima, uh, Senior Manager for HR and uh, Administration, to take it away with, uh, with the alumni of GFI. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Once again, a very good evening to everyone. And before I start the next session, I would like to thank all our current and ex-employees, consultants, field coordinators, interns, and support staff for the many contributions they made. It is because of the efforts made by each one of you that today Grameen Foundation India successfully completed its 10 years of operation and has made a deep impact in the lives of many to create a world without hunger and poverty. Now, I would like to welcome our panelists of BFI alumni who were kind enough to take out time from their busy schedule to participate in the alumni talk. So let's begin with Devahuti. Devahuti, we still miss your infectious presence in office. Devahuti, you had so much to give to the organization. You were the captain of the client inside for impact division, but a true key representative of the overall organization. You are someone who made friends for life in Grammy and still facilitate the existence of the ex Grammy Nico. We want to know how do you glue everyone together, Devahuti? Uh, can you tell us about any instance that is strongest in your memory about the time you spent with the fellow colleagues while you nurtured the research wing of Grammy? Uh, thanks, Madhurema, for your very kind words. Am I audible? Yes, they will be loud okay. here. Great. Um, yeah, thanks so much for your kind words. That was really some introduction. You made my day. Um, but I do agree with you on a lot of counts, more uh, and most especially on the fact that I have made friends for life in Grammy. Um, so, uh, yeah, in terms, okay, let me start with the incident. I think we have had several memories, uh, you know, in Grameen Foundation of doing things first, for, uh, you know, in terms of setting up a consulting arm uh, around research and development, which is client uh, insights for impact. The fact that, you know, the leadership both at the global level as well as in India, uh, you know, with Chani and then subsequently with Prabhat, they had the confidence to sort of, you know, invest in the idea of, you know, setting up a research uh, consulting uh, arm such as that. And then, you know, of course, now the legacy is being carried forth by, Rahul and team uh, in Grameen and I'm so happy that you know um, the client insights for impact has become a force to be reckoned with uh, and really diversified in the kind of work they're doing um, but you know more specifically in terms of an incident which will really uh, always rein me back to Grameen foundation is really my first day um, at the organization and when I say first day it's the first time I ever stepped into the office um, you know for my interview with Chandni um, it, 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 uh, it was a regular day I called in for an interview. It was a formal interview. Um, but you know, I somehow had some mishap and I lost my footwear of all the things. So you walk into an office for an interview and you don't have footwear. So I made a call. Should I just walk in barefoot, you know, take the chance. Maybe the CEO will just ask me to get out and say that if you can't dress up properly for an interview, you might as well not come back again. Or, you know, should I just get this repaired first and then walk back? I took the chance. I walked in. Uh, I apologized profusely. And, you know, Chani said something really simple to me. She said, I'm here to interview you. And uh, it's not really what you're, you know, wearing right now or whatever. But, uh, and I got through. Um, you know, I mean, that was really, really something that set out this organization for me in terms of the value that they sort of assign to the talent and skill sets that people bring on board. And which is why, um, you know, through the years since I joined in 2013 and now as Prabhat continues to build the team, I see that, you know, there is a most incredible group of people who carry the legacy of Grameen Foundation forward. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly stop there because I think, you know, that's really one of the singular moments 
for me that you know i remember about grammy um but if you have any other question i'm happy to answer those but i'm sure there's a lineup of really great alumni already who are waiting to also speak thank you so much devahuti for sharing that incident and i i clearly remember you had told me about it and even till today we maintain the same it is the person what is uh, most important and not what he or she is wearing for the interview yeah 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 you <laughs> thank you dc next i like to introduce sharda who comes from the first batch of gfi staff and the first person to take on marcom for gramin foundation india so sharda we would want to know how you started marcom back then what is that one unique feature of gfi that you still remember hi madhurma i don't think we have sharda in yet so uh, can you proceed with the next person sure absolutely absolutely i'll do that so we will wait and want to sharda and moving on uh when ever we talk about gramin india's history one name that automatically comes in our mind is fazel fazel we all know that it was you who built the people solutions department for gramin which became a brand for itself but today what we would want to know is what is it that motivated you back then we want to hear the fascinating story of the initial days of gfi as art of organization over to you fazel okay uh, hey everyone it's great to see that we have more than 80 85 people in this call and it's so so uh, nostalgic and cool to see all of all of you here and and you know be speaking to uh, this this set of uh, people i used to interact uh, uh, on a regular basis now uh, so i would uh, obviously say that the sense of uh, you know uh, job satisfaction but you know when i had this offer and while i was going through the interview i actually never thought that i'll get that kind of uh, you know such a huge uh, huge uh, you know uh, uh value out, out of it in fact i had a uh, and most people uh, here in in the team know about this i got jcbs and uh, gramin's offer almost at the same time and i went to my one of my ex bosses and thanks to him he told me that you know what you have been working uh, in corporates and you will also get this opportunity to work but this is one of the most sensible and meaningful work uh, that you would do in your life a lot of people would like to do something like this at a later stage on this life but you know what more than that this is the time where you should do something which gives you an opportunity to learn a lot of things and that's that's what it is so go ahead and and uh, join this company and i'm still thankful uh, to that person to you know showing uh, suggesting me something uh, wise and uh, trust me those were the most uh, you know best days of my life from a learning point of view i never see any experience in the last say more than 17 years of my career where i would have learned as much as i learned at uh, gfgfi on on a regular basis and uh, you know on and and honestly if you ask me i used to do at least thrice of what i'm doing today or might have done in my last role but i never never felt tired i mean at times i would wake up at 2 o'clock uh work on a project and uh, submit it or review it early in the morning in fact at times i have that this this discussion uh, with my wife and she said that you know now you don't wake up at like 2 o'clock in the uh, morning and switch on your laptop i said yeah, i don't but those those were the days and i never felt stressed or tired because you know I mean, there was stress, but stress at times is a friend because that was a positive stress. Uh, there is a, a sense of learning. You know that what you are doing is actually helping you. So, so why do you get tired? I mean, uh, at one point of time, while uh, at uh, GFI, I would travel like more than twenty days a month. But no, no, you know, I never felt that uh, I am getting bored or tired, or uh, you know, there is a, a monotonous uh, in, in my role. and uh, and i would like to reiterate what chani said it was also because of the culture that was developed by say by the leadership team uh, chani jennifer uh, 
uh, Alex, uh, also uh, uh, Peg Ross, and and uh, the culture, the vibe that we used to have in in the office with team members like say Nimrat, Shivi, DC, Sanjay, Gaurav, uh, uh, and Gaurav Chakravarti, as well, uh, and I'm uh, Madhurima, Priyanka, all of these uh, people. So. So that was the reason, you know, that's something which keeps me motivated to give my best on, on every day. Uh, thanks, sir. Thanks for asking this. Yeah, I, I, I still, while talking about this, I can still feel that uh, energy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faisal. We still miss you in office. And uh, I did get time to uh, work with you for a very short time, but there was a lot that I learned from you and I still look forward to learning a lot from you. I believe Sh Shraddha is back. Uh, Shraddha, can you hear us? Yes, hi. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Hi. Hello? Yes, hi. yes I can. Okay, great. 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 So uh, once again, uh, let me introduce Sh Sharda. Great, Sharda. We can see you and hear you all there. Okay, great. Uh, so great, Sharda sorry, uh, is someone who started the Marcom for Grameen Foundation India. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Madhurima, you had a specific question for me, is it? Shada, it's just that we would want to know how you started Marcom back then and if you can tell us about any unique feature that you remember uh, about GFI. Right, right. Um, great. So, um, so yeah, so my background was I was actually working with Grameen Foundation USA out of, uh, out of Hong Kong. Um, we had a regional office in Hong Kong at the time and uh, I uh, kind of became a shared resource where um, I looked at uh, marketing and communications for Green Foundation India. Uh, I mean, the, the organization was doing some incredible work in India. And I think uh, a need was felt to be able to clearly talk about the work that the organization is doing and all of this, this you know, great work and amazing work that the organization is doing um, to key you know, um, stakeholders and supporters uh, uh, there. So that kind of was uh, my role. And uh, for me, it was interesting because I hadn't done... Um, you know, a communications exclusive role before. Um, I think Green Foundation India was like my entry point into that. Um, but I really uh, enjoyed it. And I think part of it was that, you know, the team was doing amazing work. Like it was really about communicating some stuff that they were doing um, really well. So to that extent, I found that job to be fairly easy because I just had to talk about, you know, a lot of really good stuff that they were doing. Um, if, if I were to kind of look back, on my time with Grameen Foundation India, um, it's 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 really amazing. I mean, I'm I'm so happy and proud to see this incredible kind of milestone the organization's achieved, and it's it's truly you know well well deserved. And I I really look back on my time there with a lot of gratitude and joy, um, because what happened for me personally was I also moved from Hong Kong to Singapore where I'm based right now. And um, so Grameen Foundation uh, didn't really have an office in Singapore. So I was working kind of from home. Um, so for me, Grameen Foundation India is the office that I was clo most closely associated with it. And, uh, you know, when you're working remotely, sometimes you feel a little bit like some sort of AI, like you're on a Skype call or <laughs> uh, on, a, on a VC and you're not really, you know, you're not really able to see and relate and talk to people and things like that. And so for me, I think I really looked forward to those opportunities to visit Grameen Foundation India. And I did a bit of that over my time there. Um, and if I look back, I think it was just an incredible camaraderie, like such a warm office and such a happy office. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think a lot of people touched upon the culture of the organization. That's really true. I mean, it was a very warm, happy um, office with, you know, staff with some incredible people who, you know, some of whom I'm still, you know, friends with, uh, with today, um, because it's just, uh, uh, you know, they were, sh they're all sharp people, but at the same time, very rooted as well, um, in the context and in the needs of their clients. So I think they brought that unique kind of combination, um, which, you know, which is, which is why I think they were able to execute, um, so much of their amazing, amazing work. So, yeah, I'm just really happy, 
uh, to have been associated with the organization. And, you know, I'm so glad to see they've achieved so much and, and I'm sure they'll, you know, continue to do a lot more in the future. Thank you so much, Sharda, for sharing our experience and your wishes. Thank you. Sure. Moving on, our next, moving on, our next panelist is our very own Dhara. I hope Dhara, you can hear me. Yes, I can. Great. So before we start, I would like to make a special thank you to you for interviewing me and hiring me maintaining that spunk in office. So today we would like to learn from you about the culture. Also, we would want to know how Ram's work had an impact on you. Oh, yes, um, I, I kind of love that question. Um, and, uh, I, you know, as everybody is, so am I, uh, you know, feeling very, very nostalgic. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I remember my first day at, uh, at Grameen India. Uh, this was uh, early January of uh, 2016. So, you know, winter morning. And I went to the office and I think we had just shifted our office uh, at Nirvana from one floor to another. So, you know, the office uh, was still sort of getting done. Um, there were a few people that day in the office. So, you know, it all started with um, sort of formal introductions. And then as the day sort of uh, grew, you know, there were work conversations and I was trying to absorb everything. Um, trying to figure out who's doing what. And then somebody said that, hey, listen, there's a discount at Chayos. Uh, let's have them some tea and snacks. And uh, <laughs> I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the bonding that happened over that chai and nashta, and then of course, uh, numerous lunch sessions then after, I think these are really bonds that I kind of treasure. Um, as I reflect back, I think on the culture, there are a couple of things which really stand out. And uh, uh, I, I think I've, I've learned a lot uh, from Brahmin and I, I try and practice it, you know, uh, in what I do today. Um, uh, my very initial interactions were with uh, Jennifer and Chani. And uh, I, I really recall um, how detailed uh, Chani was in terms of really letting me know as to uh, you know what is expected out of the role what are the challenges we are facing um, and uh, i mean every possible detail i think these were long conversations and uh, these these were interesting conversations but i think uh, it, it was great because uh, you know it set expectations um, and uh, I think I was able to sort of uh, then really, you know, get into deep waters right away. Uh, that's something that I retain. I, you know, whenever I recruit for my teams, uh, I, I invest. In fact, I over-invest, uh, you know, in the early interactions. I think it's a great way to, one, uh, figure out cultural alignment. Uh, secondly, you know, the aspiration uh, that people have. Uh, and, and more importantly, I think you can create that alignment right away. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's something that I kind of uh, uh, practice. Um, another thing that I, you know, when I reflect, uh, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I do know all of the verticals that we had, all of the projects that we had. Uh, I mean, we had, uh, you know, good amount of success and, uh, uh, you know, when you talk about an organization, you really want to think about it as, as a high performing organization, right? But performance is, is just not about productivity and output, right? It's, it's so much about uh, a, a fine balance between that and, you know, the empowerment that you're able to provide your teams um, and, and, you know, the empathy that you have for your staff, right? So um, I, I think there was such a fine balance. I, I, did, I don't know how it happened. It's, it's probably, uh, you know, uh, what, what Chani mentioned that she wanted to kind of really build that culture, you know, right from uh, the beginning. And I, I think it all happened very effortlessly and, uh, you know, with ease. Um, 
so I, I try and kind of actually try and do that. Uh, I, I, I do create um, uh, whatever empowerment I can uh, within my structure. I, of course, now work with a very regulated entity. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's important to sort of empower teams. Uh, I don't micromanage, but, uh, uh, you know, I have their back. I mean, if they err or uh, if they're not able to do something, uh, they know that, okay, well, you know, I mean, uh, uh, this is where kind of I can kind of approach and kind of get it resolved. So I, I think that's a great way to sort of build confident teams. Uh, uh, so that's something that, again, you know, something that stayed with me um, uh, quite well. And uh, last but not uh, uh, I, I think Grameen was a great place to work. Uh, the amount of fun that I've had there, uh, I really miss it. <laughs> uh, and it's not easy to replicate, uh, really. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, really that, and, uh, I'm so glad to be here. Um, uh, I, I kind of had the opportunity to be at the job, uh, conference uh, last year. Uh, and, uh, you know, I do follow, uh, the social media handles of, uh, uh Grameen India. And, uh, I feel so great and I'm so proud of the work that all of you are doing. So here's wishing uh, many more milestones and a lot of success, uh, you know, in, in all your efforts and endeavors. Thank you so much, Dhara. And Dhara, I hope you know we still have a Dhara fan club in Grameen. Okay. One of Grameen's milestone project was the mobile health project. And the name that goes synchronized with this project is of course Kamalika Sain. Kamalika, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome. Great. So Kamalika, tell us about your experience of collaborating with the Grameen team. Uh, first of all, hello everyone. It's uh, wonderful to see you all over here, all over again. Uh, so actually, it it is actually 10 years ago that I associated myself with the Grameen Foundation. So it's uh, 10 years for me to and uh, I walked right into the uh, the MoTeC project, and uh, it was in Hyderabad that I met uh, Tim Wood, who was uh, heading the MoTeC project from Seattle. And I met a whole lot of other people, but uh, they were all uh, people for a new project that was coming along, a project based on mobile phone messaging to reach out to HIV patients uh, and for their improvement of their treatment. And then there was a naming ceremony for the for the uh, the, the application, and uh, we named the name Tama was given. I joined Motec team in about two weeks from then, and uh, with Tama to be developed on top of Motec. So that was the start of my journey with uh, Motec, with Grameen Foundation, and then later on with uh, Grameen Foundation India also. Um, uh, uh, one incident that I remember, in fact, uh, after, uh, in, after I joined Grameen Foundation with the MoTeC project, after that DFI was, uh, came into existence and Chani, uh, I was introduced to Chani. Chani was an absolute key factor in coherent the diverse program teams that we had in Grameen Foundation into a close, happy unit. I think everyone is saying that all over again. Chani made sure that it was a GFI family feel that was uh, that that existed all through. What stands out for me now, actually, I believe, uh, is you know the trust that was placed in me and the freedom that was that was given and the support that I received from everyone in, uh, in the organization. I remember uh, in the early days when we were, uh, DFI hadn't come into existence or was just, just starting up. We were talking to partners in India to roll out the program. And uh, the first thing that they would say, uh, so what is your website? So we didn't have a website at that time as yet. So we were an entity as part of uh, Grameen Foundation USA. 
we had uh, we had some exciting times. Nimrat would be able to also talk about it. And uh, in fact, um, there were many incidents that we had with uh, you know to interacting with our partners, and uh, uh, we would bump Nimrat and I would bounce off bounce it off each other. And in fact, in one of the Grameen Foundation uh, off-site meets, uh, you know, the there were short classes which were given out as GFI mementos, and uh, mine had uh, no problem. You will your problem will be resolved in 30 minutes. So that was a joke because 30 minutes we didn't know how long that 30 minutes was. And this is this is the short glass I've got it here with me. And it's uh, dated August 29th to 31st, 2014. So exactly six years ago. Uh, so uh, it's it's been a wonderful journey. It was uh, it was really good uh, working on all the all the uh, projects on Motec. And what what was really good was that. Uh, you know, the feedback that uh, came back to us was that, you know, the, the beneficiaries for the MOTEC uh, projects that we did, uh, they, the, the biggest feedback that came back was that they were, um, they always felt good that they were being reached out to using the phone uh, messages and uh, voice messages. Uh, and so that they wouldn't, they would feel taken care of even when they are far away in their remote homes or or their villages. That was that was a tremendous satisfaction. And of course, uh, all the all the team members in in GFI. I mean, we had uh, Motec team was just me in the beginning, and uh, Pankaj joined in 2015, I think. So we doubled our team immediately. Uh, but uh, GFI was a fa fun place to be in. And uh, all my years in GFI, I think seven years, uh, it, was, uh, it was a tremendous learning. All the best to GFI in the future, in the next decade to come, and decades to come. Thank you so much, Kamalika. And thank you for bringing in the shot glass also. Next, whenever we talk about Grameen Foundation India's Innovation in Digital Finance project, one name that can never be missed is Neeraj for the immense contribution that he made in expansion of GFI's work in the new geography of Maharashtra. Neeraj, can you guess the scale in which Nagpur office has expanded? I hope Neeraj, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Yes, Great. Rima, I can hear you and uh, I, I have been tracking everything. So I <laughs> We started with just two. We are about 10 staff members operating from Nagpur office. But today, what we would want to know is, what is it in Grameen that excited you back then? And what do you miss about Grameen the most? Yeah, but my question was different. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, <Neeraj. laughs> <laughs> So oh, yeah, uh, see there are there are a lot of uh, things uh, that that goes uh, uh, with Grameen and uh, thanks for mentioning uh, uh, the Nagpur project and the scale uh, to which it has uh, reached. Uh, it is it is really wonderful to hear uh, and see how how it is growing and how uh, the ladies on the ground are working relentlessly in uh, the current uh, uh, situation. If, if, it, if it benefits uh, even a small percentage of uh, people uh, in some co corner of uh, India, I think uh, that will be a great achievement and I truly feel humbled to be associated with it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, as everyone, I also started uh, my journey with uh, Grameen uh, 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 at Gurgaon office. Uh, uh, I again, I came for an interview and uh, Chani was, was was the one who uh, assessed me and it was a, it was a long discussion. Uh, it it was uh, uh, not exactly an interview but uh, a discussion of uh, a different nature wherein we were trying to uh, understand each other and uh, see how how compatible 
I'll be uh, uh, with the Grameen culture or the projects that we were uh, doing. Uh, it 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 has been a uh, it were it has been a wonderful journey in terms of the projects uh, that I had handled. Uh, there were uh, like the biggest thing and the biggest uh, uh, takeaway that I I have from uh, Grameen is the is the fact that I was. Uh, uh, given a free hand in initiating some of the projects uh, since a very uh, since very initial stages i had uh, full say in how how things uh, needs to be uh, shaped up or taken forward i loved that freedom uh, uh, and there were several uh, uh, aspects to uh, any pro any project that we pick up uh, uh, be it uh, be it uh, creating uh, creating content for Geely uh, for different projects, be it uh, uh, Grameen Guru, the AI thing that uh, Gaurav sir was working at that time, uh, be it uh, content creation for uh, different uh, audio visual, uh, um, uh, audio visual uh, uh, learning modules, or be it uh, the portion of uh, the IVR thing that I did for the very first time and experienced it. Uh, I thank uh, uh, Kamalika's support, Kamalika's and Pankaj's support for it. Uh, then there was uh, 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 the event, JPM event that we uh, uh, like all, all, all were uh, at one point of time, everybody was like, uh, uh, how, how, like we have to do it impeccably and uh, it, it 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 was again a, a new experience for me something that we have never done before uh, and uh, the highs highs uh, from uh, from uh, from my uh, days in uh, gramin are are when we were able to clear uh, uh, some of the some of the payments or invoices from uh, 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 irma when we were able to complete uh, uh, this JPM project impeccably, and then we were able to kickstart the uh, uh, Nagpur project from scratch. And I, I, I again feel very wonderful that uh, there are some of the partners with whom we are still working and uh, uh, progressing. Yeah, and again, uh, I wish everyone uh, very best for future. And uh, I'll I'll be one of the cheerleaders uh, uh, for Grameen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Neeraj. Thank you so much. It was indeed a pleasure interacting with all of you and reviving the memories of Grameen in the last 10 years. Now, I would request Prabhat to take over for the next session as the moderator. Thank you, Madhurima, and thanks everyone for sharing your wonderful uh, memories and, of course, you know, uh, a deep appreciation for all that uh, all of you have done over the years to bring Grameen to where we are today. Now in this section, uh, you know, we were looking so far at the, at the last 10 years, but it's also a moment uh, to, to look forward, look ahead, and see what are the, some of the important things uh, or you know, uh, priorities that we should look at in future. So we are calling this section um, crystal ball gazing. So crystal ball gazing is, is where you know, uh, it's, it's a kind of you know, art or whatever, you know, uh, whatever you call it. You look at a crystal ball and then you kind of try to predict the future uh, looking at the ball. So uh, here we have got, uh, you know, three uh, experts uh, who will look at three different angles or domains uh, as, as we look ahead, look future. So first uh, panels for this section is uh, Suresh, Suresh Krishna. Uh, Suresh uh, is, of course, a, a board member in Grameen Foundation for Social Impact. But of course, uh, he's uh, you know known as the uh, leader in social impact business, social business in India. He established the you know, Social Business Fund in Bangalore, uh, and uh, before that, he was the founder of Grameen Kuta, a very successful microfinance institution, which is now uh, called as Great Access uh, uh, Grameen, and he served as managing director of Grameen Kuta for almost uh, 15 years. Uh, so Suresh, uh, you know, will be talking to us about, uh, you know, uh, what are the major social development challenges uh, that he foresees over the next 10 years and how social business as, as a methodology or as an approach could, could address some of those uh, social challenges. Uh, Suresh, if, if you can hear us. Uh... Yes, Prabhat, I can hear you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, Suresh. And over to you. Good evening. Oh, thanks. 
Oh, Prabhat, first of all, congratulations to you and the entire team of Grameen Foundation here. I am so privileged that I know after a long time I'm meeting Alex, Shani, Royston, and uh, Madhurima, Dhara. I don't know, a lot, a lot of you. I can't really remember all the names. It's so nice that uh, to see all of you on this uh, on Zoom call. I think it's we have lost all these in the last uh, four or five months that meeting anybody in person. So we only have to relate to everybody on, on virtually now, which I don't really like it, but I think this is the best it can probably be in this current circumstances. But Chani, hi, I uh, hope you're doing well in US. Alex, nice to see you again after a long time. Uh, yeah, I think I know you, I don't know whether this is the time for crystal ball grazing. Uh, but I, I'm sure this is a time to celebrate Grameen Foundation's 10 years. And I remember very much uh, when Chani set it up and when Alex and Royston and all of us were really thinking how Grameen Foundation will uh, set up here and kind of work which you do. I have been fortunate that you know at every stage of whatever Grameen Foundation and Chani did, I, we were part of the whole uh, experiments or kind of you can say we were guinea pigs for uh, most of the work which um, we did but we did some pioneering work yeah, look the ppi was an amazing success of grameen foundation uh, i think even today i think we when actually the regulations came in we were the only people who could tell the world that you know we are reaching the really the poor because we had data to back that that's because of ppi we also did MIFOS and many other stuff. I will not bore in, uh, I'll not get deeper into that because that's what my excitement is. But whatever I am today, I think I should recognize that it was because of Alex's support to us as Grameen Kuta when we started and Chandni was a fantastic supporter of us. So that's how Grameen Foundation really uh, uh, has supported a lot of institutions in India and outside. And many of us, whatever we have achieved today is uh, the efforts of Grameen Foundation. So good, like you said, that we have progressed further from microfinance to social businesses. Grameen Foundation is, uh, is the first social business, both Grameen Foundation and Grameen Capital. I see uh, just two minutes, I'll not take much time. I'll just, because it's not the time for the thinking about too much uh, this thing. It's time for celebrations today, actually. Uh, just a few words, uh, uh, I think, I think the future in the next decade, I think, would be the time of social businesses in the in the next coming decade. At the present point, social business is in very nascent stages. We have very few examples uh, which are doing well. Uh, but if you look at our uh, uh, current situation because of COVID, the kind of things which has uh, changed for us, the kind of... Uh, uh, things which COVID has shown what we are, the vulnerabilities, what we have, the uncertainties it has kept in. We were completely taken off guard. I mean, none of us were prepared. I think the whole world was not prepared. If you look at the numbers today, we were, uh, it is a, so shocking. And we were all asked to stay indoors and not get out at all. I mean, like, we've learned how to do it. That's a different issue. But thing is, everything is out of care. We would have seen pictures of people going back, walking, uh, back home, hundreds of kilometers back home because they did not have jobs. If you see all these, whatever has happened in this thing, this was just a shock which shows that how uh, our current systems and current structures, what we have, is not supporting the humanity. I think Professor Yunus has been talking about the world of three zeros for a long time. Uh, we, uh, I think the, in the next 10, 15 years, uh, we will actually start looking at, uh, unless we make appropriate changes in the way we all are doing things, we will be a, a stuck. Social businesses would be the fantastic model for that to actually change the whole so, uh, society. I mean, there are different development challenges in the, uh, in the country and the world. I think if you look at the key challenges which is, which is going to come up would be on uh, because of wealth concentration which you might have seen it during this COVID crisis that you might have heard from the news that and how hospitals were charging uh, very high uh, fees for the patients who are really in need. That's because of the kind of structures and the greed which certain people have and the structures which are actually trying to milk the opportunity. There are many examples. I'm not going to dwell much, but just wanted to highlight that. Job losses were there. So this is another thing which we need to be looking at 
I think Grameen Foundation, that's a jobs conference which we did last year. Uh, that's an important thing. We are going to be losing jobs, not just for uh, the crisis is what we have here, uh, having now. We are going to be losing jobs because of technology. The whole jobs conferences, conference which Grameen Foundation did highlighted all the challenges we have. Even though the government and many other things are saying that jobs are kind of uh, there, there are new jobs are coming in, but we don't know that the way we are very, we're very sure actually that people are not ready to take up the new kind of job which is coming up. So there is a need for skilling and reskilling people. That's a big job which is coming up. Health, like we talked about it earlier, and climate change is also uh, not going anywhere. You, because we are, we are thinking that we are, uh, uh, we are safe because we are burning less fuel and things like that. But the power needs are shifted from vehicles to electricity and the other needs. Of, uh, so that means we are still burning a lot of fossil fuel uh, elsewhere. We don't see it just uh, in, our, in front of our eyes. So climate change is a big problem. Climate change, also, which has already caused, also is going to cause food security problem. I think uh, Steve mentioned earlier that biggest one of the biggest challenges which COVID threw in front of us is food security. We also have seen it, like you know, a lot of people who did not uh, have food at all because the shops were closed. They didn't know where to get food. They didn't have money to buy food. Of course, the civil society and the uh, I mean, everybody contributed to that. But going forward, I see if we have to set all these things right. In fact, Professor Yunus said, we should uh, not go back to the old norm. We should actually recreate a new norm for ourselves in the society. So social businesses would be the way forward, where all the profits which the businesses make will be reinvested to further in the goals of the, uh, solving the society's problems. I think the whole so, uh, businesses now should start looking at more being more inclusive, more resilient to uh, such kind of pandemics which might come back again. I think we have not done with the COVID yet. We are in the middle of the whole crisis. We have not seen the end. We don't know where it is going to uh, take us. But are we all ready for all these challenges? We have adapted. We are just the. If you actually go back into the field, I mean, into the into the uh, remote corners, we find that people are struggling because uh, I think uh, there is the businesses have stopped. Economy is in this uh, bad shape. So all these can be solved if we start looking at doing businesses differently. So social businesses is the best way. I, we all know about seven social business principles. If we adapt that into most of our businesses today. I think uh, in the future, even if there are some crises which come up, we will be able to uh, support all the human beings and all the humanity so that they can at least have the basic needs which they will have, whether it is health, whether it is food security, or uh, even the moral support which they require. I think that's important. We also have one of the things which COVID also threw in front of us, which probably I want to highlight here, is we were all dependent on a global economy. We were talking about as a globe as one world. I think that uh, is something which we need to question. We need to probably look at a lot of things, manufacturing for the local communities locally. I think our prime minister coined that uh, interesting word, local, uh, the local. Uh, I think many of you might have heard it. So that means you are talking about all the essentials. I think as individual countries or co communities, I think we need to look at how do we uh, manufacture them or have it um, uh, in, in the local community itself. I think we need to think global, but we need to act local, uh, which is also part of the social uh, business goals. Uh, so I think this is where I think uh, the future should uh, go. And I think we will also go towards it because we have seen how vulnerable we are, how uh, dependent we were on things coming from elsewhere, which is going to derail us and put us into difficulties. So I think social businesses are the future. Kamin Foundation is set right to actually support social businesses. To support social businesses, these are my last words, uh, to support social businesses because it's in essence now, we need to look at building enough support systems to encourage entrepreneurs to start thinking about new social business ideas. Uh, there is a lot of knowledge out there. We need to bring it to them. We need to build networks. Like the way we build uh, networks for microfinance, today it is flourishing industry. 
we never thought microfinance would become a large industry. We were when we all started. I think we were thinking we will help some community locally, but now we are talking uh, national level numbers, and I think there is no state, no territory which microfinance is not touching today. Uh, but uh, resources are one of the important things. I think social business resources are not uh, not fully available yet. Even the political support or the policy support is slightly confusing at this point of time. We are confusing social business, social entrepreneurship, impact business. There are all kinds of things which we are using. I think we need to uh, clarify what a social business is properly at the policy level and start building both political support and resource support needs to come in. Uh, so with these words, I would stop here at uh, trying to crystal gaze things and wish Gavin Foundation the best for the next one decade. And hello to all my friends here. Thanks. Thanks so much, Suresh. Uh, you know, it's so, so wonderful to hear about you know some of these ideas, especially you know in, in a world affected by COVID, and you know how social business can address some of these uh, core challenges that that have always been there and further accentuated by the by the current uh, environment. Uh, so the next uh, you know topic uh, you know that we have is uh, what role we see technology playing in addressing some of these social development challenges over the next decade. And for this topic, we have invited Sanjay, Sanjay Podder, uh, who has been a long-term collaborator with the Grameen Foundation, but he's also the, the Managing Director for Accenture Technology Innovations in Africa and Asia Pacific region. Sanjay is the Regional Lead for Accenture Labs, where he leads R&D in a number of areas of software engineering, analytics, and automation and domains such as responsible software engineering, human-centered software engineering, and, and intelligent and quantum uh, computing systems. Sanjay also holds over 20 patents to his name in artificial intelligence as applied to software engineering and process automation. And we have been in fact uh, fortunate to have uh, you know, a long-term association with Sanjay and with Accenture Labs in developing some of the tech products that, that we have been talking about like Grameen Guru and, and Ease uh, kind of systems. Uh, Sanjay also leads uh, this uh, vertical within Accenture called uh, Tech for Good. So I think he's the, he's the best person to kind of, you know, uh, tell us, you know, in, briefly about what he sees as the role of technology in promoting social good over the next uh, decade. Sanjay, over to you. Thanks, uh, Prabhat, for having me today in such a very, very important day, 10 years. And uh, I can see Steve, I'm, 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 I'm reminded of uh, the time we had in Washington, D.C. Thanks for the turmeric latte. <laughs> and later on meeting you in Bangalore. Gaurav, wonderful working with you on Grameen Guru. Uh, so uh, as Prabhat mentioned, one of the uh, program that I uh, run in Accenture is called Tech for Good globally. And that takes me to wonderful social innovators like yourself across the 17 sustainable development goal areas. And um, you know, I will speed up a little because I know this, we are over time. So many of you are really uh, wondering how much time I am going to take. But uh, uh, the sustainable, sustainable development goals are exponential problems, right? Uh, and so you need technology, exponential emerging technologies to solve them. And because what is really happening is, uh, especially in the COVID time, the speed of uh, innovation has accelerated. You know, what we are saying is, what used to happen in three years is now happening in three months, right? So that, that you can even see the way AI is being used for developing vaccines and, and, and everything else, you know, the way we can be at home in meetings like this, still collaborate and uh, work thanks to technology, right? Uh, so there is no doubt that technology is going to play a very, very important role for tackling some of the toughest problems faced by humanity and the planet, right? So that is, that is very important. Uh, what we are seeing is the uh, tsunamis of technology that is coming to us, AI, blockchain, extended reality, quantum, neuromorphic, and all these are coming rapidly. And when you use them in combination, you can start reimagining solutions to all these problems, which earlier we thought was very difficult to address. I think uh, Grameen Guru Prabhat, what uh, you know, got initiated between both of us, and uh, thanks to Chandni for winning the NASCOM Foundation uh, Social Innovation Forum Award, because of which uh, Prabhat, you and me uh, later on engaged along with Gaurav to create Grameen Guru. It had a lot of interesting elements of technology. For example, AI today has reached 
uh, human level of conversational understanding, comprehension. And what we did at that time was multilingual AI, which was ahead of time. Nobody was talking about it, but we were talking about uh, conversation in local Indian languages, right? So in that sense, uh, uh, when the uh, fast company world changing idea uh, was granted to us for the Brahmin Guru, I was not surprised because we were thinking ahead of time at that point, right? So I do feel that people will reimagine solutions to problems and uh, that is what technology will enable us to do across SDGs. Uh, so the first thing I'll call out therefore is new possibility. Things which were earlier not possible, today it will be possible. So next 10 years, you know, we can imagine a lot of interesting uh, solutions. The second important thing to remember is new responsibilities because the moment all these technologies are used, we have to remember how to use them correctly because otherwise the people we are trying to protect, we are going to make them more vulnerable. And when I talk about this, I talk about things like building systems without bias, for example, so that you don't end up disenfranchising people or building systems which ensure data privacy. Today it is very important because in COVID for contact tracing and for various reasons, we are giving our data, right? And it's very important to use for the intended purpose and it is not uh, misused uh, later on. And I think my earlier speaker also pointed out to the fact that, you know, the, the way the carbon emissions are happening is invisible today. You know, for example, Bitcoin in a year contributes to more carbon emissions than entire Switzerland, uh, you know, as a, as a country. Or, uh, you know, when you uh, are training an average AI model, it, it, it emits more carbon than or energy it consumes than uh, maybe uh, three American cars, average size cars in the lifetime. So these are invisible. So every time you are using Netflix uh, in your car, remember it's not just the car contributing to the carbon emissions, but Netflix is as well, you know? And so uh, we have to use these technologies in a way that uh, they are green. And you know, that is, the, that is the other aspect, right? So there's a lot of areas on new responsibility. Finally, I will talk about uh, a new mindset. And uh, I remember 2017 when I met Steve as a part of my Azana Fellowship journey, uh, we were thinking about uh, pro profit, people, and planet. And at least in my organization, large multinational, people would uh, look at me with uh, some kind of a question mark in their face. What is he talking about? But I am so glad to tell you in 2020, responsible business is what we call it. And it is all about people, planet, and purpose. And earlier this year with the World Economic Forum, we signed up the, uh, what we call the SDG ambition, where we are saying that every business in this planet should have sustainable development goal in the core business model, right? Now, um, and, and the final point I can make is technology is very important, but not sufficient. Unless we form ecosystems like the way we did, uh, Prabhat working with uh, Grameen and Accenture and others, we can't scale uh, these innovations, you know, because each one of us have a certain capability, but unless we come together, join hands, this kind of tough social problems cannot be resolved. Um, I'm, I know, you know, in terms of time, we are not, uh, we are over time. So I will uh, wish you all the best for the next 10 years of achievement. And I'm so, you know, glad that I'm part of this larger Brahmin family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, it's so wonderful to to have you today on 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 this uh, in this event. But of course, you know all the contributions that that you have uh, made, uh, you know, and, and working with us has has been fabulous. And and uh, the way you can imagine the future, uh, I think you know we are really fortunate to have have that kind of you know vision coming coming from you. Uh, I'm I'm cognizant of a little bit of you know over time that we are running, but uh, you know we are not going to take very long. So another seven or eight minutes more. The final speaker for this segment today, uh, you know, we have Girija Srinivasan. And Girija, I had requested to talk about the uh, how she looks at the role of and importance of uh, addressing gender inequality in the next, uh, you know, 10 years as, as we approach towards uh, SDGs uh, target 2030. Because, uh, you know, we still see that, that uh, gender uh, inequality is such a huge issue. And it has been the mission of, of Grameen since day one to, uh, to see you know, how it can work towards women's economic empowerment. 
Girija, uh, just to give a brief, brief introduction, she is currently uh, one of the board members of Grameen Foundation for Social Impact, but she's a, she has been a development banker with over a decade, uh, you know, working in NABARD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. And then she kind of, you know, uh, turned herself into an international consulting consultant in the areas of livelihoods and rural finance. She has been involved in design, supervision, and evaluation of uh, strategy and implementation of several uh, niche and unique development projects uh, in India and around the world, working with, working with several uh, multinational and, and bilateral kind of organizations in the areas of rural livelihoods, uh, you know, banking, financial inclusion. She has been a prolific author, wrote several reports and, and uh, you know, on, on livelihoods, social performance management, etc. So, uh, Girija, over to you to talk briefly about, uh, you know, how you look at the challenges of addressing gender inequality over the next 10 years. Thank you so much. Thank for you, Prabhat. Thank you, Prabhat. And at the outset, hearty congratulations uh, uh, to Grameen Foundation India team for its uh, decade of excellent work in India. In fact, the entire Grameen group is one of those rare group of institutions which have looked at addressing poverty and livelihoods issues through women's eyes. Their contribution to gain space, autonomy, and uh, economic power for women has inspired several others across the world to recognize the potential of women. Microfinance movement, whether Grameen model or uh, SRG model in India, recognizes this potential of uh, women as better money managers and uh, receptive target group for uh, livelihood enhancement and also income improvement of the households. So it is indeed a time for celebration. Uh, India has achieved substantial results in uh, providing opportunities to girls and women to catch up to being equal to men. More girls are going to school now, fewer girls are forced into early marriage, access to basic bank accounts has improved, thanks to Government of India drive on financial inclusion. The gender divide on bank account ownership is very narrow at 6%. More women are serving in parliament and the positions of leadership and laws are being reformed to advance gender equality. But the pace is not enough. As per UNDP report, based on current trends, it would take another 202 years to close the gender gap in economic opportunity. If you look at uh, India's position, India ranks uh, 136th among 144 countries for which data on women's uh, labor force participation rate is tracked. So it is a very poor performance. So the labor participation includes both wage and self-employment. So for every six men participating in employment, only one rural woman participates, indicating severe gender disparities in relation to employment. And uh, almost 60% of uh, prime working age Indian women are not economically active. Where they are active, they are mostly in less productive sectors like agriculture, in informal and marginal sectors, and are more likely to be self-employed with far less income as compared to men. So multiple challenges need to be addressed to improve women's economic uh, uh, participation. Uh, I think uh, Suresh talked about skilling. It is so important uh, that our young workforce is uh, skilled. And uh, you know the major initiative uh, for generating wage and self-employment has been skilling um, in India. At present, the major funder for skilling are governments and skilling initiatives are government, I'm sorry to say, is gender neutral or even gender blind. The skill trainings do not recognize the different needs of girls and boys. How many girls are getting skilled is also not well tracked. And uh, if we look at you know, the needs of uh, women in productive age, they want more work from home. Uh, this is precisely be because of you know, the uh, terrific burden on them uh, for unpaid work. Uh, Indian women seem to spend 9.8 multiples more time on unpaid work compared you know, only three multiples globally. So balancing the competing burdens of work and family responsibilities, this will have to be addressed. So I think uh, looking forward, we need to reimagine the initiatives and solutions needed for economic uh, participation of women. The current solutions and the pace at which this is going, it will not uh, suffice at all. If you look at sectors, agriculture sector employs 80% of all economically active rural women. But the assets are not in their name. 12% of operational holdings are that of women. 
land ownership and also decision making is usually in the hands of men women need to have control of assets and income most programs shy away from addressing such uh, strategic shifts they prefer to address low hanging fruits like providing trainings to women most address short term gains and not strategic initiatives needed to provide equal opportunity so shifting women into work in higher productivity sectors on par with the employment pat pattern of men would increase their contribution to gdp but will need focused attention of every stakeholder and i hope this will be one area which uh, you know will uh, will uh, get undivided attention of uh, government policy makers donors funders they will have to address consciously the gender divide to improve the economic opportunities for women let us look at the financial inclusion space um, given the fact that sdgs focus on achieving gender equality by 2030 we would expect many funders will redouble their efforts to increase women's financial inclusion cgap study shows that uh, from 2016 to 18 international funders increased their commitments to women's financial inclusion by 16% however how do we explain the fact that less than 10% of fi programs have gender component assuming that projects targeting the general population will inevitably reach women is fallacious and uh, only 2.9 billion us dollars that funders committed to gender projects in 2018 is a mere fraction of the 25.7 billion uh, us dollars of funding that uh, uh, projects uh, were, uh, were reported to have not to have gender focus um, funders need to allocate adequate funds for furthering women's financial inclusion so this will be a major wish list for 2030 by 2030 and as far as india is concerned we have found reasonable solutions to financial services especially credit for women at the bottom of the pyramid however cost of credit is still high most livelihoods and enterprises do not have the returns that support such high cost loans there are numerous challenges as women progress out of poverty to being entrepreneurs moving out of a group loan to individual loan is still difficult financial institutions hopefully will have products processes technologies and more important importantly the right inclination to finance women's enterprises and this i really hope will start happening from the current year onwards and uh, we have much more to report by 2030 we find fewer women as we progress higher women managers are few as compared to men and board positions of women in corporates is due to the quotas prescribed the celebration of women's capability as seen in the bottom of pyramid is it to be seen in the higher ranks by 2030 we should have more reasons to celebrate at higher rank as well i think by 2030 it is expected that technology and infrastructure are expected to bring considerable changes in our operating context most of indian villages will be connected by paved road india will have reliable electricity for everyone internet will be cheap and universal 6g will be available Uh, and increasing the uh, data transfer uh, for uh, households and businesses but unless we understand how these changes will affect men and women and their livelihoods differently women can be left further behind a case in point is the digital divide so though there is a, a digital uh, uh, digitalization of financial services increasingly uh, women are getting left behind because they don't own uh, smartphones and uh, they have to rely on the smartphones of the uh, men in the family so we need to really do very good gender analysis to see that women uh, keep up with the pace of development 2030 is the year of achieving sustainable development goals women's equality and empowerment is one of the 17 sdgs but integral to the achievement of all the sdgs as per the 2019 uh, sdg gender index not a single one of the 129 countries is fully transforming their laws policies and budget decisions on the scale needed to reach gender equality and india ranks 95th out of these 129 countries we really have a long mile to travel and uh, just to conclude gender inequality is a human development shortfall and a failure which needs to be addressed on war footing we need to work with much more strategic intent 
while concessions and quotas can be good at short term in the longer term we all need to create an ecosystem and also level playing field where women can realize their potential as a matter of right we have to reimagine our work with women and men to make economic gender equality possible thank you so much and wish you all the best for another uh, a decade of wonderful work thank you thank you girija those were so uh, so important uh, points that that you raised about uh, you know the, the inequality the barriers and and the divide in, in in so many spheres whether it comes to the leadership or whether it comes to access to credit or livelihood opportunities and and all of that so thank you for reminding us about the huge huge challenge that lies ahead of us and as gramin foundation of course we'll will uh, try to see how we can play our role to kind of address at least some of that and thank you for for you know your your words and also thank you for being being on our board to you know guide us as we work on the, that challenge every single day so with that uh, you know we come to the end of this uh, first segment which is the formal segment uh, you know of of our celebration and now will be the time to start the informal segment which will go on till about 8 pm india time uh, so those of you you know who, who are short of time you know are are uh, you know uh, if you want to drop off it's, it's okay but if you, if you have time uh, please you know continue uh, you know as part of this informal celebration uh, in which we will have some some cultural and you know creative you know uh, presentations by by current and ex graminis Uh, but before we, we, we I hand over uh, to to Madhurima for that, I'll just take a moment to recognize some of the people who are on the call and you know, on the Chindi list. Uh, so, somehow we, we could not you know create enough time for all of them to speak, but we would have really loved to hear from them. Uh, so Lauren, you know, the former board member of GFI and and you know executive vice president of GF USA, now she is the CEO of uh, Equity Bank Foundation in the US. Sarojit Ayer, kind of a journalist who kind of has been collaborating with us, you know, prolifically and you know, writing articles about our work. Thank you so much for being here. S S Bhatt, who is now uh, heading uh, Friends of Women's World Banking. Ruski Mahal from from Yes Bank. Uh, you know, Sanjay, of course. Uh, you know, uh, Vinita, our current board member in in GFI. Vami, our former colleague. Uh, Shivi, uh, Colonel Prakash Tiwari. Uh, you know, a board member in GIV. Uh, you know, uh, Marianne and and Jennifer. Uh, Jean. uh geeta banks uh, our donor from from canada who is supporting our lakshwati program um you know beth ryan current gf usa board member uh ellen uh, uh, ellen uh, you know uh, chris chan former board member of gfi uh you know ashish our current uh, charity accountant anjali makija uh, chief operating officer of uh, sm segal foundation uh sanobar from handy train so just j- i just want to make sure that you know i recognize all of you uh, and thank you for for being here and you know uh, i am sure i would have missed missed out some other names but you know uh, this is this is a, a real pleasure and a privilege to have all of you uh, with us today to to celebrate this, uh, this uh, important occasion so yeah, with that we we come to the end of this formal segment and now i'll hand it over to uh, uh, madhurima for the next segment or is that purna i take it on prabha this is purna well thank you so much prabhat uh, now bringing this upcoming session uh, together has been a process of revelation for me and uh, madhurima thank you for embedding this session here at this event it is incredible to see the range of talent gfi has always had and continues to do so and uh, so we have tried to bring forth a little glimpse and taste of some of those talent in this uh, very very tight one hour and i hope you enjoy this curated performances also to encourage our performers please keep dropping your comments and reaction in the chat box we will make sure that it reaches each of our performers also for uh, uh, for best experience to view these performances please change to gallery view uh, which can be found on the top right corner of your screen so if you can make that shift you will have a best view of each of our performances Okay, we shall uh, start with our first performance, which is a group dance, and which will be led by Ronisha. Over to you.
I think the switching on the music is taking a bit of time. Just bear with us. Are we able to see Ronisha? Yes, we're just fixing the music again. No problem. We literally started dancing. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> without the music itself. We were that ready. Like we were like, okay, let's dance. <laughs> no problem. Take your time. We are all ready. Thank you. Okay, we are ready. dive into the next performance, I would like to take a minute and tell you all about the importance of this Kala Chashwa song in GFI. This song has become to this tune in most memorable occasions and milestones of this organization, be it bidding adieu to Chandni or welcoming Prabhat. Today we wanted to start with this song and dance to bring back the old memories and relive it today with all the Graminis past and present. Now, to take the show ahead, I would like to invite our very own Vamik to moderate the talent session with GFI Illuminari. Thank you. Vamik, you're on mute. Sorry to interrupt. I'm so sorry. I'm so new to Zoom. I was dancing while the dance was going on. Realized later on that my video wasn't on. So I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm very new to Zoom. So can I be heard now? Yes, you are heard. Okay, so let me tell you, the Graminis have been amazing in the office and beyond the office. I've used the word beyond very intentionally. So uh, here are a couple of performances by the alumni. Uh, I used to request you to kindly get uh, Arshia's video ready by the time I introduce her. So Arshia Haldar was uh, a consultant. She came in as an intern with the CII team and then transformed and became a consultant before she left Grameen Foundation India. So she recorded a very beautiful poem by Rabindranath Tagore from his novel, Seshir Kobita, which will be played and uh, it'll, it's a Bangla poem, but it has been translated into English. And this is the first time that uh, in Grameen Foundation, Bangla is being translated into English. Otherwise, we never had subtitles before this. 
So uh, before we begin the poem, let, let me just tell you a bit about uh, Arshia. So I got the opportunity to know her. So she's someone who's a researcher by the day, dreamer by the night. She is an economist by the day, poet by the night. She's a pragmatist during the, by the day and a romantic by the night. So can we just play uh, the recitation by Arshia? Hey guys, so for today I have selected a small beautiful portion from a highly celebrated work of Rindana Thakur. Uh, it's from uh, Sheshir Kovita, which uh, literally means the last poem. And I've been uh, reciting it in Bengali first and then uh, provide an English translation of it at the end so that uh, all of you can enjoy. So I'll start. More lagi koryo na shok. Amar roche gorbo. Amar roche bisho lo. More patro. Rik to hai nai. Shun lo ke kori ko kuhun. E proto pohi ko shodai. Utkon to amar lagi. Kyo jodi poti kya ke. Shee dhon lo kori be amar ke. Shukla pokko hote ani. Rojo ne gonda bin to khani. Che pari shaja te. Orgo thala krishna pokko na te. যে আমারে দেখে পারে পায় অসীম হমায় ভালো মন্দ মিলায় সকলেই এবার তাহার পূজায় আপনারে দিতে চাই বলে সো দিস ইজ আট ওয়ের দ্য বিলভেড ইজ স্পিকিং টু দ্য পার্সন ডাইরেক্টলি অ্যান্ড ইটস আ ভেরি বিটার সুইট মেলো অ্যান্ড হাইলি ট্রান্সেন্টাল লাভ দ্য চি স্পিকিং অফ ওয়ের she is uh, saying goodbye and telling the person not to mourn for her because uh, she is not alone she is, has this whole huge world for her and uh, she has uh, a lot of work to do a lot of work left the karma uh, left in this world to do her cup is still not full and she can go on throughout her entire life trying to fill this cup of hers with all the work that she wants to do for this world and if somewhere sometime on some show someone comes on some right fortnight and provides an offering of the most beautiful offering of rajini ganda flowers which we know uh, blooms in the night if someone can make an offering uh, out of rajini ganda flowers which will last her for the following dark food night as we know after the full moon 15 days we come the new moon and then the dark period comes so she is saying if somehow somewhere she finds on some shore she finds someone who can make her that offering of rajini and the flowers which will last her for the next dark food night who can take the good and the bad make the virtues and the vices come together and make a beautiful amalgamation of it. That person, and only that person, will see her in her true essence. And to him, and only to him, she is going to bow her head in deep devotion and love. So, uh, I tried to translate this as best as I could. Uh, hopefully, you all uh, enjoyed this. Gustaki maaf kar dena for if I went wrong anyway. So, uh, stay blessed and happy anniversary GFI. Once again, I forgot that I was on mute. So thanks a lot, Darshia. And it was beautiful and probably food for thought for everyone. So now we move on to the second performance, uh, which I am a part of. Uh, so this is called Prism, and it's basically a recitation of a couple of poems in Hindi and English and Urdu, which is being done by uh, Shiva, Shivi and me. I don't think I really need to introduce Shivi, uh, but uh, she, for, for the people who don't know her, she was a part of People's Solution and uh, such an important part of GFI she was. And I believe she's still a very important part of the Gramini family. So this presentation will have some poems 
by by some of the biggest sports poets which will be basically about perspectives so may i request shivanjali to shivi to please start off the performance all right hello everyone and congratulations gfi for 10 fantastic years it's just a pleasure to see all of you after so long brings back so many memories um uh, in fact so much that I'm very emotional right now. So I hope that works in my poetry recitation too. But great to see all of you. So um, let me begin by, uh, you know, with a few lines from my favorite uh, poet, uh, who is Maya Angelou. And uh, the poem is When I Think About Myself. So here it goes. I think about myself. I almost laugh myself to death. My life has been one great big joke. A dance that's walked. A song that spoke. I laugh so hard, I almost choke when I think about myself. 60 years in these folks' world, the child I work for calls me girl. I say, yes, ma'am, for working sake, too proud to bend, too poor to break. I laugh until my stomach ache when I think about myself, when I think about myself. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful, beautiful, Shivi. So, we have to go to the कविता का वो अलोक धनवा साहब की एक कविता है भागी हुई लड़कियां उसमें से मैं आपको एक छोटा सा टुकड़ा सुनाऊंगा इसका अनुवाद जरूरी है जरूर है भागी हुई लड़कियां लेकिन ये उससे कहीं ज्यादा बड़ा है तो मैं चाहूंगा कि सब गौर करें कि घर की जंजीरें कितनी ज्यादा दिखाई देती हैं घर की जंजीरें कितनी ज्यादा दिखाई देती हैं जब घर से कोई लड़की भागती है अगर एक लड़की भागती है तो यह हमेशा जरूरी नहीं है कि कोई लड़का भी भागा होगा कई दूसरे जीवन प्रसंग हैं जिनके साथ हो जा सकती है कुछ भी कर सकती है कुछ भी कर सकती है महज जन्म देना ही स्त्री होना नहीं है वो कहीं भी हो सकती है गिर सकती है बिखर सकती है लेकिन वो खुद शामिल होगी सब में गलतियां भी खुद ही करेगी सब कुछ देखेगी शुरू से अंत तक अपना अंत भी देखती हुई जाएगी अपना अंत भी देखती हुई जाएगी किसी और की मृत्यु नहीं मरेगी वो किसी और की मृत्यु नहीं मरेगी वो किसी और की मृत्यु नहीं मरेगी मेंजी सो द नेक्स्ट पोम दैट आई हैव इज बाय सैफो हु वाज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट फीमेल पोइट्स ऑफ ग्रीस एंड शी डाइड इन 500 बीसी सो द पोइम और द पोम पार्ट मी इज टाइटल्ड द एनिक्टोरिया पोम हियर इट गोस इट इज परफेक्टली इजी टू मेक दिस अंडरस्टूड बाय एवरीवन for she who far surpassed mankind in beauty helen left her most noble husband and went sailing off to troy with no thought at all for her child or dear parents but love led her astray lightly um and she has reminded me now of anictoria who is not here i would rather see her lovely walk and bright sparkle of her face than the lydian's chariots and armed infantry wow what what a, what a perspective on the helen of troy agli uh, nazm ka jo hissa main padhne ja raha hu wo nazm hai ek shayara hai sara shaghfta unki sara shaghfta ne 33 saal ki umar mein khudkushi kar li thi बिल्कुल सिल्विया प्लाथ की तरह सारा ने ट्रेन के सामने आकर खुदकुशी की थी 
बिल्कुल आना कारेनिना की तरह सारा ने बहुत बर्दाश्त किया था बिल्कुल जिंदगी की तरह तो अगली कुछ जुमले सारा के कलम से बैन करने वालों ने मुझे अत खुले हाथ से कबूल किया बैन करने वालों ने मुझे अत खुले हाथ से कबूल किया इंसान के दो जन्म हैं फिर शाम का मकसद क्या है इंसान के दो जन्म हैं फिर शाम का मकसद क्या है मैं अपनी निगरानी में रही और कम होती चली गई कुत्तों ने जब चांद देखा अपनी पोशाक भूल गए मैं साबित कदम ही टूटी थी सच अ ब्यूटीफुल लाइन मैं साबित कदम ही टूटी थी अब तेरे बोझ में धस रही हूं तन्हाई मुझे शिकार कर रही है ऐ मेरे सरसब खुदा खिजा के मौसम में भी मैंने तुझे याद किया ऐ मेरे सरसब खुदा खिजा के मौसम में भी मैंने तुझे याद किया आतिल की सदा मकतूल नहीं है गैब की जंगली बेल को घर तक कैसे लाऊं? गैब की जंगली बेल को घर तक कैसे लाऊं? फिर आंखों के टाट पे मैंने लिखा मैं आंखों से मरती कदमों से जिंदा रहता मैं आंखों से मरती तू कदमों से जिंदा रहता अमेजिंग सो लाइक यू मैं सिल्विया प्लाट्स वॉज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द मेलिकलिक पोइट्स ऑफ आर टाइम्स एंड आई थिंक वन ऑफ द ग्रेट वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट आर्ट्स हैव come out from great pain if i may say and that brings me to uh, our next poem uh, which is lady lazarus by silvia plath now this was one of her best poems because uh, it was composed just two months before she committed suicide and here it goes and i a smiling woman i am only 30 and like the cat i have nine times to die this is number 3 <laughs> what a trash to annihilate each decade dying dying is a not like everything else i do it exceptionally well i do it so it feels like like hell i do it so it feels real i guess uh, you could say i were call i guess you could say i were call wah 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 to ab aakhri nazm prison ki aap sab ke liye और ये नज्म खास करके मैं प्रभात की तरफ मुखातिब होकर सुनाता हूं क्योंकि ये नज्म लिखी है धूमिल ने जी हाँ बनारस से जुड़े हुए धूमिल तुलसी के परंपरा को बढ़ाने वाले धूमिल हिंदी कविता के आकाश का शायद सबसे चमकता सितारा धूमिल यारों का यार धूमिल अन्याय के खिलाफ हथियार धूमिल तो अगले चंद जुमले धूमिल के कलम कलम से कविता के कान हमेशा चीख से सटे रहते हैं कविता के कान हमेशा चीख से सटे रहते हैं नहीं एक शब्द बनने से पहले मैं एक सूरत बनना चाहता हूं मैं थोड़ी दूर और और आगे जाना चाहता हूं जहां हवा काली है गौर करिएगा ये बहुत जरूरी जुमले हैं जहां हवा काली है जीने का जोखम है सपनों का वयस्क लोकतंत्र है आदमी होने का स्वाद है जहां हवा काली है जीने का जोखम है सपनों का वयस्क लोकतंत्र है आदमी होने का स्वाद है अच्छा तो विदा मित्र विदा जाओ लेकिन मैं जानता हूं कि कल जब 
भाषा की तंगी से उठते हुए अपने शहर में वापस आओगे तुम मुझे गाओगे जैसे अकाल में खेत गाए जाते हैं और अभियोग की भाषा के लिए टटोलते फिरोगे वो चेहरे अभियोग की भाषा के लिए टटोलते फिरोगे वो चेहरे जो कविता के भ्रम में जीने के पहले ही पर्दे के पीछे नींद में मर चुके हैं पर्दे के पीछे नींद में मर चुके हैं बहुत खास जुमले थे ये इस प्रिज्म का मकसद तालियां नहीं थी एक सोच थी कि क्या एक बहस पैदा की जा सकती है जैसा कि आपने देखा होगा मोस्ट ऑफ द पोम्स वर बाय फीमेल पोइट्स एंड दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वुमेन अक्रॉस द एजेस सो दैट्स ऑल वी हैड फॉर नाउ एंड आई होप इट वुड इट वुड मेक एवरीवन थिंक इफ देयर इज एनी अदर अलिमना आउट देयर हु वुड वांट टू परफॉर्म और डू एनीथिंग द फ्लोर इज ओपन अदरवाइज आई हैंड इट ओवर टू पूर्णा टू टेक दिस फॉरवर्ड Well, personally, I could go on and on and on listening to both of you. Thank you so much, Vamik Shivi and Arshi, of course. You know, all I can say that you know we miss you so much, and uh, thank you for being such a good sport and accepting our request to perform as a representative of the whole gang of the ex gamblers. Thank you. But well, still, that's very lovely for us, Puna. <laughs> Pleasure It's is all pleasure. The the doors and the windows. I don't know. Everything is all open for all of you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you wholeheartedly. Okay, moving on. Our next performer is God of Sinha, coming in with his poetry. Uh, God of, you are on mute. God of, you are on Just mute. Just a second. So hi everyone. Today I would be reciting a few words on the impact of Gramin Mitra's and Gramin's commitment to work with women. So the piece is called "Today She Is the Change, Tomorrow the Change Maker." While well, the ideas are mine, I had a little help putting together these words to convey my gratitude and appreciation to the Gramin Mitra's. So this is how it goes: This new morning she rises to build a world with knowledge and opportunities. teaching the teaching her community the possibilities of a secure and inclusive world because then comes empowerment and empowered women in equality this is what it takes to build a nation greater because today she is the change tomorrow the change maker an economically empowered women creates an empowered community where no adversity breaks her this is what it takes to build a nation greater because today she is the change tomorrow the change maker an economically empowered woman is also a socially empowered human where she stands for equality raises a voice against injustice that is what it takes to build a nation greater because today she is the change tomorrow the change maker an economically empowered woman is also a politically empowered human she knows her rights and educates like a knight and she fights out right and shines bright that is what it takes to build a nation greater because today she is the change tomorrow the change maker an economically empowered woman is also an aware human on everything around a better decision maker a better person in compound who knows technology science and society who respects loves and cares who unites educates innovates and builds a greater nation as a change maker thank you that was all for me thank you so much gorav well our next uh, item is a little different uh, you would be entering our gfi gallery that will exhibit uh, some of the sketches and paintings and photographs by three of our very very talented colleagues so we'll start with uh, some sketches by akshada hello हाँ अक्षदा यू कैन प्रोसीड आप शुरू कर सकते हैं uh, सबसे पहले तो थैंक यू कि आपने मेरे स्केचेस यहाँ पर शो किए हैं तो जैसे कि अब हम सब लोग वुमेन्स के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं सब लोग ने बहुत अच्छी तरह से वुमेन्स के बारे में बताया है लेकिन कहीं ना कहीं मुझे लगता है कि आज भी किसी कोने में कोई एक लड़की है जो 
किसी मर्द के हाथों में फंसी पड़ी हुई है उसको ऐसा लगता है कि शायद उसे वो छूट अभी तक के मिली नहीं है कि वो कुछ अपनी ओर से तैयारी कर सके या तो फिर कुछ आगे बढ़ सके तो इस स्केच का ऑलमोस्ट मतलब ये होता है कि एक लड़की है जो कहीं ना कहीं किसी मर्द के हाथों में ही फंसी हुई है और वो अभी तक के उड़ना नहीं सीखी है तो बस ये एक मतलब था प्लीज नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट प्लीज सॉरी तो इस स्केच का मतलब होता है कि शायद हम लोग हमेशा सोचते हैं कि काश हम लोग वक्त को थोड़ी देर के लिए रोक कर रख सके या तो फिर कभी हमें एक पॉइंट पे ऐसा लगता है कि काश कि हम वक्त को थोड़ा सा बदल सके लेकिन वक्त ही ऐसी चीज होती है कि हम शायद उसे अगर रोक भी दे तोड़ भी दे तो भी हम उसे कभी नहीं रोक सकते समय जो है वो हमेशा अपनी ही तरह से चलेगा फिर चाहे वो हम उसे कंट्रोल कर पाए या ना कर पाए लेकिन वो अपने ही दौर पे चलता रहेगा कभी किसी के लिए रुकेगा नहीं वो नेक्स्ट तो ये एक ऐसा पोर्ट्रेट है कि मोस्ट ऑफ जो आर्टिस्ट होते हैं वो बहुत जिद्दी टाइप के होते हैं कि जब तक कि उनको उनके दिल को कोई जब तक की कोई चीज छू नहीं जाती और उनको ऐसा लगता नहीं है कि आ, मतलब कोई चीज है जिसे वो एक पोर्ट्रेट में उतार सके तब तक के वो उस चीज को शुरुआत नहीं करते भले ही वो पूरी चीज एक कोने में ही क्यों ना पड़ी रहे लेकिन करेंगे तो अपनी दिल की ही कि जब तक के उनको एक खूबसूरत सा कोई चीज या कोई व्यू नहीं मिल जाता जिसे वो एक तस्वीर में उतार सके तो थैंक यू मेरे पूरे स्केचे शेयर करने के लिए थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सो मच अक्षदा Okay next is a couple of paintings by Nikita Thank you Purna am i audible Yes you are Nikita Thank you thank you so much Purna uh, first of all uh, many many congratulations to all graminis and uh, so uh, uh, can you please share my paintings Uh, so uh, uh, ये पेंटिंग uh, मैंने नॉर्मली इस uh, मतलब थॉट से बनाई थी एज वी आर वी ऑल आर सेलिब्रेटिंग टेन ईयर्स जे एफ आई कम्पलीशन ऑफ जे एफ आई सो मैंने टेन ईयर जे एफ आई लोगों को जे uh, एफ के लोगों को इंडियन इंडियन नेशनल फ्लैग के कलर कोड में uh, uh, मतलब पेंट करने का ट्राई किया और सराउंडेड बाई वर्ली ट्राइब बट नॉर्मली वर्ली ट्राइब हमने देखा है कि सेम कलर्स में uh, देख 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 देखते हैं हम जब भी कहीं पे पेंटिंग्स देखते हैं बट मैंने उसमें जी एफ आई के कलर कोड यूज किए हैं लोगों के सो so, उसके पीछे थॉट ये था कि जब हम जी एफ में एंटर करते हैं तो ऑल वी ऑल बिकम ग्रामीणिस सो ये पेंटिंग का मतलब यही था कि आज हम टेन ईयर सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं एक साथ टुगेदर सो नेक्स्ट प्लीज सो uh, uh, ये uh, मैंने एब्स्ट्रैक्ट पेंटिंग बनाया है सो so, uh, मेरे uh, इस पेंटिंग पे थॉट ये था कि uh, मैंने मेरे पास जितने भी कलर्स थे मैंने इस uh, इसमें डाल दिए थे uh, और थॉट इसमें ये था कि हर एक कलर के डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मीनिंग होते हैं डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कलर यूज करने का थॉट होता है सो so, मेरा थॉट ये था इसके uh, पीछे के जैसे भी uh, जैसे कि कलर्स के डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स होते हैं वैसे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में हर एक uh, हर एक एम्प्लॉय हर एक uh, का अलग अलग रोल होता है और वी ऑल आर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट रीजन स्टेट लैंग्वेज और वी ऑल आर टूगेदर मेकिंग अ ब्यूटीफुल आर्ट दैट इज जी एफ आई सो ऐसे ही ये सारे कलर्स एक ब्यूटीफुल आर्ट क्रिएट करते हैं सो ये था मेरा थॉट इस पेंटिंग के पीछे थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन फॉर लिसनिंग टू मी वेल थैंक यू सो मच निकिता we have a few captures uh, from our very talented anand can we show them please anand can you hear me i hope anand is here
Ayush, can we go ahead and re- and share the photographs that Anand had? Uh, he, said he should be here. He shows that he's here. So Anand, I just I shared the photos. Yeah, Anand. He might have connectivity issues. Ayush, why don't we go ahead and you know share the you know, go to the next photo and share the photographs that he's captured, uh, you know, and sent us, you know, there are photos that he's captured from the field. And there are a couple of his travel photos, because he's an arduous traveler. And, you know, even if you see him in the photo, it, it's also clicked by him, uh, set by him. And the so the composition is his, and he's clicked uh, through a tripod. So, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible that to see the kind of uh, passion he has towards photography. So, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of Anand, uh, but I hope at some point uh, Anand is able to explain these himself. Sure, we can go. So yeah, Anand, let's go to the uh, next one. Yeah, Anand told me about these photos. So he tried to click the photo as the Gramin Mitra was sharing about uh, sharing the information with the vendor and trying to, uh, you know, just uh, take their life ahead. So this photo was about that. Let me just go to the next photo. This was the second photo that was clicked by Anand. And this also we can see a Mitra that was basically sharing, you know, uh, information and her, what she know about digital finance with other people so that they can also benefit about it. This was the third photo that was clicked by Anand. And this uh, was the fourth photo. And here was the fifth photo. Thanks, Ayush, for sharing those. I'm, I, I mean, and I know that uh, Anand has an affinity towards portraits. So even uh, in his photography, he captures, uh, he intends to capture expressions. And so, you know, that's where he, he gets its motivation from as well. So thank you, Anand, for sharing all of that. Uh, we'll move on. And uh, next we have a poetry, which is written and will be narrated by Anchal. Thank you, Puna, for the platform. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so when I sat down to, you know, pen down my words, uh, I thought what we as a Grameen Foundation are, what our role is, again, what we had discussed in the beginning in, of the, this beautiful evening. So I thought, uh, my thoughts, I have penned them down, uh, what I think of Grameen Foundation. And this poem is, is in Hindi. So uh, Grameen Foundation here is Majdhari. Majdhari meaning a boatman who is connecting the two ends of the river. So I'll start with the poem. Main kisan nahi, main majdhari hun. Sichai haato se nahi ki, par us fasal ka main bhi yogdani hun. Mera dil gaon mein basta hai, to kya agar main shahar se gaon ki pragati ka bhaagidari hun? Haan, main kisan nahi, par main ek majdhari hun. Isne kaha, usne kaha, gaon hamara pichra raha. तो क्या हुआ जो उस खेत से ही सब खाते हैं तो क्या हुआ उस ईट वाले के परिश्रम से ही सब घर अपना बनाते हैं फिर भूखा वो क्यों सोए क्यों दूर उससे उसका फल रहे अब मेरी भी निंदिया ना आए रातों में जो अंधेरा ना मिटे उस सुनहरे गांव में हां मैं किसान नहीं पर मैं एक मझधारी हूं नदी नहीं मोड़ू पर पुल का तो निर्माण कार्य हूं गांव गांव में चर्चा है लड़की की बेकार अवस्था है अब ना बनूं मैं उस समाज का हिस्सा जाना उस बच्ची की रक्षा उस नन्ही मुस्कान को और खिलाना है लक्ष्यवती से जोड़ अब भागे उसका मुझे भी सजाना है हां मैं किसान नहीं पर मैं एक मझधारी हूं महिला विकास ही गांव का विकास समझाने का मैं भी जिम्मेदारी हूं आज एक सुकून है बहुत कुछ कर जाने का जुनून है एक हाथ थामा था जो कुछ वक्त पहले वो निखर कर खिल कर एक नया सपना दे रहा है खुद को ग्रामीण मित्रा कहकर दुनिया को भरोसा दे रहा है उसको सराहने वाले 
आगे बढ़ाने वाले आज सब फिर एक साथ हैं ये वो शाम है जहाँ ख्वाबों की अपनी ही एक पहचान है अभी एक लंबा सफर और तय करना है और दस साल बाद पूरे भारत में मित्रता का संगठन हमें सेलिब्रेट करना है हर ग्रामीणी की यही अरमान है सशक्त भारत की सशक्त महिला ही पहचान है हाँ मैं किसान नहीं मैं एक मझधारी हूँ कन कन कर समुद्र को पार लगाने वाली हूँ थैंक यू सो मच फैंटेस्टिक थैंक यू आंचल अनिकेतना अब आपकी बारी है कांट वेट टू हियर यू सिंग Thank you, Huna. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. So, a uh, little bit of effort from my side to just entertain you all. Uh, so, I'll be starting with uh, my song. Tu, tu hai wahi dil ne jise apna kaha. Tu hai waha, main hu jaha. तो ये जीना तेरे बिन है सजा ओ मिल जाए इस तरह दो लहरे जिस तरह ओ मिल जाए इस तरह दो लहरे जिस तरह फिर हो ना जुदा हाँ ये वादा रहा फिर हो ना जुदा हाँ ये वादा रहा ये जान कर बलम जी थामी है तेरी बाहे सहनी पड़ेगी सबकी कांटो भरी निगाहे ये जान कर बलम जी थामी है तेरी बाहे सहनी पड़ेगी सबकी कांटो भरी निगाहे सब सहेंगे हम और हंसेंगे हम माँ मेरी जिंदगी आना ही परा सजना जालिम है दिल की लगी आना ही परा सजना जालिम है दिल की लगी तू तू है वही दिल ने जिसे अपना कहा तू है जहा मैं हूँ वहा तो ये जीना तेरे बिन है सजा मिल जाए इस तरह दो लहरे जिस तरह फिर हो ना जुदा हाँ ये वाह जो प्रवीण ने खुद लिखी है प्रवीण Uh, good evening, all of you, and uh, many, many congratulations to all the families. And a little bit of a poem is "I will see you again." Please forgive me. 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 ऐसे आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए दवा ने डॉक्टर की ने खाने दीजिए आलसी आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए किस आलसी आदमी की कभी शादी ना कीजिए आलसी आदमी की कभी शादी ना कीजिए किसी मासूम सी लड़की के किसी मासूम सी लड़की के जिंदगी की बर्बादी ना कीजिए आलसी आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए इन्होंने पी पी के दिन भर इन्होंने पी पी के दिन भर रस गन्ना महंगा कर दिया और रात में पी पी के मैकडॉल नंबर वन महंगा कर दिया रात में पी पी के मैकडॉल नंबर वन महंगा कर दिया ऐसे आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए दवा डॉक्टर की ने खाने दीजिए 
पहन पहन के इन्होंने जूता पहन पहन के इन्होंने जूता बाटा ब्रांड महंगा कर दिया पहन पहन के इन्होंने जूता बाटा ब्रांड महंगा कर दिया और खा खा के इन्होंने चाटा खा खा के इन्होंने चाटा मारने वालों के नसीहत का घाटा कर दिया ऐसे आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए दवा डॉक्टर की इन्हें ना खाने दीजिए आलसी आदमी को मर जाने दीजिए दवा डॉक्टर की इन्हें ना खाने दीजिए थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच प्रवीण थैंक यू वेल इट हैज बीन अ फिक्स फॉर मी डेलीगेटिंग रोनिशा विद अ परफॉर्मेंस वेल वॉट कैन शी नॉट डू So on this occasion, Ronisha decided to go with where her heart lies, and she's going with spoken words. Ronisha, over to you. Hello, everybody. I hope you can you know, hear me proper. Yes. So, um, you know, uh, I I am somebody who does like a lot of poetry slam, but uh, today I thought that. what can i do which is not poetry slam which is much more uh, which can connect you, connect with you more father so here i go what happens after after a word a suffix used in sentences or sometimes as an embellishment perched on a lie feeding the meaninglessness my letters to my ma seem to be lost under the rubble of years of unbecoming i rummage through the past and i found those letters kept away tidily into little box now made of iron steel what happens after after is when i begin my journey to nourish the scars left on my body by the phenomenon called life wear them as badges proud shillings as i call them each scar with a story of a lifetime you know i've noticed that clouds are not as dramatic in the cities anymore they appear stale and i smell unhappiness from these grey hounds it is only after you struggle to find the roots beneath your feet is when you truly identify what your identity is your history bewilders me of feet embedded beneath the moss of the mountains the sand from the oceans never appear tired after having walked miles and miles through nooks and crannies in an ordeal so divine it's willing to go farther words seem to have lost relevance in the fast life almost like they're out of fashion we instead use technology and gadgets to express what an irony this life is animated emotions are conveyed through inanimate things after is when revolutions and great rebellions begin followed by years of living a tyrant fantasy i have met some faces i have met some faces that look like summer afternoons beery but hopeful of the rain that a very hot day promises with eyes so piercing and soul so stirring almost storm like i think i think i started treating every billboard on my way every window poster by the block as match messages from the universe is when i no longer remembered that winter night when i was talking about i didn't like talking about because it gave me a tug in my heart because it sank inside my skin every time somebody talks about it my identity bleeds on the floors of your tomb like lives it begs no more to be seen cleaned it says it no more wants answers my identity has made friends with ambition it says it doesn't want to belong to nobody anymore so i set it free allowed it to run without me chasing the pain of being born in a concrete jungle hangs on my neck like an albatross i weep i weep listening to stories from far away lands with trees jungles and the oceans for what a tragic life it would be if your life's made of only out of city lights and brick and mortar 
but only after when it's my mouth is filled with shells and my heart with blue spirit and color only for me to rebegin dreaming in technicolor once again thank you this was fantastic ranisha thank you so much coming up next is a performance that i guarantee is going to take most of you by surprise presenting the chupa rustam of gramin jairaj with a song well in this song i am merely accompanying jairaj that's about it can you hear me can you hear the music madhurima प्यार का नजमा है मौजो के रवानी है एक प्यार का नजमा है मौजो के रवानी है जिंदगी और कुछ भी नहीं तेरी मेरी कहानी है एक प्यार का नजमा है लाल 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 i could request jairaj and punna to have a few more songs for us but just considering the time constraint we'll move on to the next so next we have a poetry written and narrated by siddharth siddharth can you hear me yes ma'am isha first of all uh, sabko congratulations ये कविता उन सभी फादर्स के लिए है जो अपनी पूरी फैमिली की जिम्मेदारी बड़ी मेहनत से निभाते हैं तो सुनाता हूँ साथ तेरा अगर नहीं मिलता गांव में आज घर नहीं मिलता सोच तुमने लिया तभी वरना छाव देता सजर नहीं मिलता शहर में सुख तलाश कर देखा सुख सुना है इधर नहीं मिलता खून बहता गया पसीना बन यू खुशी का नगर नहीं मिलता गांव छोड़ा था बस इसी खातिर गांव छोड़ा था बस इसी खातिर काम सबको उधर नहीं मिलता काम सबको उधर नहीं मिलता ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सिद्धार्थ थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम so coming up our final performance of this evening hope you all enjoy it it's a group song led by poona uh may i ask you all to switch video to gallery view
Yep. Thank you, Madhurima. Ayush, are you putting the lyrics up on screen? Only if you want to. Well, singers, do we want the lyrics on screen or do we have our own copies? Gaurav, do you have your line? Okay, let's start. Me. Please unmute yourselves before your part. Aajal ke tujhe maine ke chalne ऐसे गगन की तले यहाँ गम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले आ चल के तुझे मैं ले के चलू एक ऐसे गगन के तले सूरज की पहली किरण से आशा तस्वीरा जागे सूरज की पहली किरण से आशा का सवेरा जागे तभी धूप मिले नबी छाओ मिले नबी नगर न खले जहा गम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले ऐसे गगन के तले जहाँ दूर नजर दौड़ाए आजाद गगन लहराए जहाँ दूर नजर दौड़ाए आजाद गगन लहराए जहाँ चल के तुझे मैं ले के चलो एक ऐसे गगन के तले जहाँ गम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले एक ऐसे गगन के तले एक ऐसे गगन के तले On that note, on behalf of the entire family of GFI, I would like to thank each and everyone who joined us today in this celebration. Special mention to our organizing team, panelists, moderators, performers, partners, 
ex-colleagues, present ones, and our lovely audience for their participation and encouragement. We look forward to your continued support in future as well. Thank you once again. Good night and stay safe. Thanks, team. Thanks, Kulik. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy birthday. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Happy birthday. Thank you, everyone. It was very nice and very beautiful to see everyone. Same here. Bye bye and good night. Stay safe. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. 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 Good night, everyone.